The following is a world class bullshit is exclusive. Finally, the Jeff has come back to Bullshitters headquarters, which means he can say finally from the comfort of his own home. Welcome to World Class Bullshitters, the epitome of pop culture. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is the one, the only, DeAndre. Baby, baby, boys and girls, children of all ages. Unlike some assholes out there in Hollywood and Lucasfilms, I will never abandon you. That, that's so sweet. Up next is Big Rig Nick Utan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. To, I'm glad to be back. We we came, we conquered a uh, star celebration, and we're back to report about all the weird, crazy, horrific things we did. Excuse me, we kicked its ass. That's how you finish that. Okay. Yeah, we kicked his ass too. Well, well you know, kind of kicked our ass. It, like, we, there was a mutual ass kicking going on. Oh yeah, we'll talk. A lot about of asses. That. A lot of asses. A lot of asses. Yeah, our buddy Nicholas Glenn sent in a super chat about that, so we're gonna get to that in a moment. Oh, finally, the man who drives the Mercedes of Missouri, Kendo Slice. <laughs> I was so fucking happy to see that skyline too. I <laughs> could not wait to get out of Chicago. I could not wait to get home. The second I saw, now now entering St. Louis, the Arch. Welcome to Missouri. I felt fucking happy. <laughs> now, back did, the, now back to the intro real quick because Jeff is not going to talk about himself in the third person because that's not what the fans want what the fans want is for us to lay the verbal smack down on that Rudy Poo flat ass cheese plate Brie Larson Ooh. So guys we're going to have some fun with that tonight but before we get to that bottomless hole let's take care of some housekeeping so up first I can't believe we have so many new patrons that we have to thank so we're about to so uh, this is our first live show technically on a Thursday in what three weeks uh technically yeah yeah yeah, yes. yeah definitely yeah so uh this is uh episode 169 or feeling cute might talk about star wars and marvel <laughs> i don't know uh I, that that's the the meme right that all the kids are using right now yeah 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 feeling feeling cute might delete later or something <laughs> well we won't delete this stream later but for all those out there if you want some more world-class bullshitters, uh, if we get to a thousand thumbs up tonight we're gonna have good morning pop culture tomorrow and i got some good news Dion and Kendo might be there to show up and hang out with us. So it might be like a little extra bonus episode and we can go one on one and talk about more entertainment. So that's going to happen if we can get a thousand thumbs up. But let's thank all the people who have backed us on Patreon. So be prepared. First up, we want to thank Admiral Tiberius. Then at the highest level, we want to thank Mr. Moose Knuckle. We want to also thank Brandon Sexton, Jonathan Strouth. Esteban. Uh, I'd like to thank Justin Gilroy for upping his pledge to the maximum. Then we have Nicholas Glenn, Edward, and finally Brandon Kraft. So for months, we've been just, you know, doing our stuff on Patreon. And now all of a sudden, we got a whole slew of new patrons, which is kind of perfect, guys, because we're uh, altering our Patreon for the better. So Nick and I, well, not, I didn't really shoot it, but Nick and Brian Lape shot a ton of footage at Star Wars Celebration. And we are going to put some of that up on the uh, certain tiers of Patreon. So if you back us over there, you're going to get that. If you're at any level, you're going to get the World Class Bullshitters After Hours podcast. And we're implementing a new video tier for all of you out there. So be prepared. Be on the lookout for that. That's going to be happening right around the corner. So you guys excited about that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Believe me. The channel is on the upswing. We're kicking ass. And uh, we want to thank each and every one of you out there who has made that possible. Now, speaking of meeting, we met a lot of people last week. Mm -hmm. Just think, one week ago, right now, guys, <coughs> we were drunk as hell, hanging out with Jesse and Anna, rummaging yep. through the streets of Chicago. Oh, God. <laughs> were we at the second bar at this point, right? We were. At this, Yeah, yeah, we were at the second bar. Yeah, we were. <laughs> yep. Okay, because I just remember we then trekked down the street to that Chinese restaurant which they wouldn't let us do karaoke at the bar, so we went to the other restaurant. Well, then, yeah, they, they were going to charge us 25 bucks a person to just enter the place, so. Yeah, uh, no thank you fans. Or not fans, excuse me. No thank you uh, people that run the karaoke bar. But it, I want to answer this super chat early on before we get into these from Nicholas Glenn, and this is for all of us guys. So how long did it take you guys to sleep when you got back? Lindy and me crashed for like 10 hours straight, LOL. Um, I mean, God, I, well, I, I had, I had a 10 hour drive ahead. Well, kind of a 10 hour drive ahead of me. So as soon as I got back, man, I was done. I was, I was out. No, no, no. They mean after the meet and greet, after the meet and greet, um, oh. didn't take, didn't take very long. We slept five hours. That's it. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. We slept for five hours and we were up the next morning, uh, going to the continental breakfast and then yeah. going to the convention. <laughs> beat I, think you, shit. I think you guys slept less than that because, uh, Nick, Joel, 
and I and Lape went back at like two or something like that. We left like one thirty because we I remember we got back and we put something on the TV and by two thirty, three o'clock we were out and waking up the next morning. Then I think you guys didn't get back to like what five? Yeah, we got back at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then we were all awake by eight. Yeah, that I don't know how I pulled that off. I don't even know how I'm still alive right now. <laughs> That's the thing <laughs> that blow my mind. We we hit it harder than we have since college. Yeah, yeah. it was a it was a five day bender. <laughs> yeah, it was worth it though. I mean, we got to meet dozens and dozens of people. We got recognized a lot at the show, and I'm not just saying that to be like, oh, we're so cool. No, it happened all the time, and like people that you would never expect to listen to us listen to us. So I thought that was kind of cool. But I want to give a shout out to people who traveled from the other end of the globe to come over to meet us. First off, our buddy Chris Wicks from Australia. That was awesome. Yeah, shout out to Chris. That was yeah. so, so cool. Also, also Chris, you are you are our Australian ambassador for WCBS, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't finish that. Don't finish that, please. So what we're doing, folks, is we're starting to implement an international ambassadors program. So it's official. Chris Wicks is the world-class bullshitters ambassador of Australia. And then for the UK is our friend Andy from the UK. Now, Andy, we had the pleasure of hanging out with Andy from Friday night, then we went to dinner on Saturday, and then we went back to the girls' place on Sunday to watch Game of Thrones, hang out. We even hung out on Monday, so Andy was there with us for quite a bit of the trip. He was telling us stories of the UK and how it's kind of gone crazy. But if you'd like to be one of our international ambassadors from a different part of the world, just shoot us an email, and we'll give you a shout-out that you're, you know, the ambassador of, I don't know, Zimbabwe, or the ambassador of Timbuktu. Well, oh, those are both in Africa, right? Zimunda. Zamunda. <laughs> I call Zamunda. I'm still I'm, I'm still waiting for somebody to email us from Wakanda, okay? Can can we get that? If <laughs> Wakanda, you're, Wakanda, if you're listening, please somebody email us. T'Challa, yes. my brothers, T'Challa. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should just we should tweet Chadwick Bozeman and just say, Congratulations, you are the ambassador from Wakanda. <laughs> Royal class bullshit. Like who the f- he wouldn't even. If we, get, if, yeah. we get a th- if, if we get a thousand retweets on that, he he might be like, okay. Watch out! Watch him turn out that he's actually a fucking fan of our show. Oh I'd believe it that he liked our show. I'd also believe that Brie Larson has seen some of our videos and be like, fuck those guys. I hope so. Yeah, she, 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 she probably she's like she's probably written us down in her little like notebook she carries around of like lists lists of people she hates. Her yeah. unicorn diary. Her unicorn yeah. diary. <laughs> unicorn yeah. diary too. The haters. <laughs> I hate. I hate that white basement dwelling Jeff. <laughs> I promise never to smile at the following four guys. And there's our name <laughs> right there. Like, it's just a, it's just a picture of us. Yeah. Our channel logo, but yeah. white, and we all look like Brian Lape. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, we need to give a shout out to Channel Dad Brian Lee. Not only did he take care of us and Anna and Jesse and everyone when they drank too much and drove us around, uh, we want to give him a shout out because he put up a Brie Larson video and his channel only has 800 and something subscribers. And he had a video go to what, 140,000 now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still, yeah, I'm still getting messages from him. It's still going up. So uh, if you guys want to help him out, um, I will tweet out. I will actually share his channel right now across all of our stuff. Please yes. do, because, folks, the amount of people that are watching right now, if you guys all subscribe to Brian Lape, that's the name of the channel, uh, he can become monetized and he can do more content. And clearly a lot of people like him. So uh, we want to help channel Brian. dead. Who, do, who doesn't like channel dead Brian Lape? Come the fuck up. Yeah. Come on. And he has a he bears a resemblance to Senator Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa himself. <laughs> yes. Hey, I couldn't. Hey, I couldn't film. I, I mean, you know, we were both filming stuff. He was, he was great to help me out. He brought all of his equipment, like I did. Like he was there all the time filming with me. Like he was a good help. I'm glad we had him. Yeah, I'm, he's the, I'm glad he was there too. He's the one that shot the epic photo of us in front of that the uh, that van from that the movie. The van, yeah, which which I which I, Jeff has a picture of. Yeah, I do. my favorite part of uh, Channel Dead Brian Lape's, uh, you know trip was when he took a picture of Dion with the Michigan University uh, yes. Stormtrooper and Dion yes. looked like his heart was broken. The, the thumbnail of one of his new videos too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he did. He did. He put it right. It was right in there. I, I, I laughed very hard at that part. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so uh, if you need uh, some of our coverage from Star Wars Celebration, it is in you know the archives. I'm going to move it over to the Good Morning Pop Culture channel. So guys, make sure you guys subscribe to that because we're going to archive all of our live streams so the YouTube algorithm doesn't you know beat us up like they did this week. But it was worth it. We were on location. We had to shoot footage, and you guys saw a lot of fun stuff. We did a live podcast where Kendo finally didn't beep boop out. We did. <laughs> we drove into the shop. Oh, yeah, Huzzah's right. We drove into the show mostly every day on camera, so that was fun. And uh, we did a show pre-show Thursday, a post-show 
Thursday. Yeah, I, I don't remember Thursday. And then uh, some more later on. And we also got snowed in, so that was fun. <coughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was ridiculous. But if you couldn't make it, uh, we'll be at Star Wars Celebration next year. And uh, as Jeremy has alluded to on the High Council, we got something big in the works. We're not going to announce it yet publicly, but uh, just make sure that you listen to all of our live streams because we are going to be talking about uh, something gigantic in the near future. So just be on the lookout for that. So a few other things that we have to take care of before we start talking about Avengers. Uh, first off, a shout out to our one of our biggest listeners, E. Tepakuyan. His birthday is tomorrow, so happy birthday to you, buddy. I know you got uh, parental duties to take care of, but hopefully you can enjoy your day and uh, you know take some time for yourself, have a beer, kick back, maybe watch some wrestling. Now, guys, I have some bad news. Oh, oh shit. And so well, let me rephrase that. I have some sad news. So oh, I'm not the biggest manga slash anime fan in the world. Uh, you know, I think... Dan likes it way more than I do, and Dan barely likes anything. But uh, the creator of my favorite character, Lupin III, has passed away, Monkey Punch. So, folks, if you're out there and you know who Lupin III was, uh, let's press F to pay our respects for Monkey Punch. Lupin's one of the longest-running characters in you know, Japanese history. I've read articles where they equate him to the Japanese Mickey Mouse. Uh, the character, still to this day, they make new shows about him. And uh, he's, it's like a mix between James Bond, uh, Robin Hood and like 60s and 70s spy thrillers. So if you haven't checked out Lupin the Third, check it out. Like I said, Monkey Punch passed away. He lived a nice long life. He was in his 80s, I believe. And uh, I think I'm going to crack out my old Lupin the Third Blu-ray this weekend and uh, watch a couple episodes while I finish up the comic. So uh, just want to give a shout out to our buddy, Monkey Punch. Now, let's talk some serious business. Avengers Endgame Spoiler Protocol. Now, I know a lot of people out there are worried about spoilers. A lot of people out there are worried about, uh, you know, having the movie ruined by douchebags. So we have taken some precautions. Now, we here at World Class Bullshitters don't need to threaten our fans. We don't need to bully you. We don't need to scare you. But what we have done is we have shut down our um, admittance for our private Facebook group. So no one can get accepted in until after the movie comes out. And the way we're going to handle this is Thursday night, when I get back from the movie, I'm going to post a pinned thread, and it's just going to say Avengers Endgame Discussion in all caps. Feel free to post whatever you want in that in that thread. That is where all the discussion of the movie goes. If you have a question, if you're trying to get our attention, just at us in that just don't post single threads about that. So that's how we're going to handle it. And like I said, everyone in our Facebook group is well-behaved, well-mannered. We don't really have to worry about it. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up how we're going to do it. So you don't have to stay off of our social media page. We're not going to be posting reactions and shit like that and uh, stuff to ruin your movie-going experience. But next Thursday night, we will be going live directly after Avengers Endgame. So we're going to be a little later than usual. But everyone here has tickets for about 6.30, right? Yep, yep. Yep. So we should all be home within a reasonable amount of time of each other. And when everyone gets back, we're going to start. And the beginning of the show will be spoiler free. And then we'll get into specifics the uh, further down the line we get. So just keep watching World Class Bullshitters uh, and uh, be on the lookout for that next week. So are you guys ready to talk about no one's favorite superhero, Captain Marvel? No. no why, of course. <laughs> I'm not either, but she seems to be in the news every goddamn day for all the wrong reasons. Wait, now, wait, wait, wait is, isn't her movie isn't her movie over and gone? Like hasn't she done her thing already and just like fucked off? <laughs> yeah, but she no. But she's still insufferable. That hasn't changed. You know, uh, right. there is a word to describe her. And in our next video which is about Captain Marvel, uh, I want to teach everyone the word pariah. Just Google it. In the video, I will go into a uh, deep discussion of what pariah means. I figure most of our fans do know because we have some of the smartest fans on the internet. But for those who don't, a pariah is Brie Larson. Yeah, now, it's one of those little fish that eats things. Yeah, no, that is a piranha. That's a piranha. Oh, I'm sure her gotcha. teeth are sharp too, just like her janky ass toenails. But we're not going to get into the personal attacks. She has been uh, unlikable since the jump. And now, did you see the video with her and Thor? I yeah. sure did. Yeah. No, I didn't. What, what, what was that all about? And, uh, tell, tell Nick. Uh, so it was her and Thor and Hawkman, as uh, Brian Lape would like to refer to him. They were doing a panel, and uh, she Thor was trying to say something, and she had to brag about how she does all her own son, so he called her Tom Cruise, and she got snarky. <laughs> and you could tell through in the rest of the little thing that she was not a happy camper. Now, me personally... Being the skeptical person I am, I think it could possibly be a work, but I always well, specifically she said 
you know, well, I'm not trying to be the next time tr- Cruz. I'm trying to be the first Brie Larson. We don't. Oh, yeah, I'm fuck. the first <laughs> me. And it's like, come on. Come yeah, on. I don't. I don't. I believe you that it's a. First work. of all, okay, okay, wait. First of all, Gal Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot did way the fuck better because she made the movie when she was fucking pregnant, but she didn't lift enough weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her delts weren't developed. Enough. I don't. I don't hey, did you me. see them legs? She definitely wasn't doing any squats. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. But she made the movie while she was fucking pregnant. Brie Larson, if, if if you did that, then I might give you a pass. But you didn't, and you're well, a bitch. Well, dude, you. who's gonna actually want to impregnate Brie Larson? Tiana Green. <laughs> I mean, that that's neither here nor there. That's not the topic of discussion, sir. <laughs> about the delightfulness, not not the impregnability. <laughs> I think well, they go hand, well, here, in hand Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, somebody, somebody spunked into Amy Schumer. So you know, Tion Green. I mean, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Also, again, I don't know why this keeps com- becoming about me. Um, Isn't it always? I'm just, I'm just a brother here doing the show. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to pay any child support or, or say anything that'll crin- incriminate me later in child support court. I'm just, I'm just doing my thing, boys. Yeah, I can't judge you on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Someone finally gets it. now. Now the Brie Larson situation goes even further. So there was a, I think it was a good morning America thing and they just kind of kept the rivalry going. But I, even though I believe it's fake, it's all, you know, just actors playing around with each other. They Disney clearly knows that the fans aren't on the hype train for Brie Larson. Uh, her performance as Captain Marvel was shit. The movie worst MCU movie for most of us here on the channel. Weakest of the 21, soon to be 22. So they want to keep poking the bear. And right now, as fandom is still testy, like you come out of Star Wars Celebration and you think, oh man, Disney's trying to win back the fans. But then stupid shit keeps happening with Star Wars. And believe me, we're going to talk about it tonight. And I'm going to be making some videos for next week about it over the weekend. But all fandom is screwed because you get these people in power that want to just constantly punch down on the fans. And, you know, humorous interplay between like Paul Rudd and Jeremy uh, Renner. That's cool. I get it. Paul Rudd is a likable actor, probably the most likable man in Hollywood. Would you guys agree with that? Mm. He's oh, up. Oh yeah. He's definitely up there. Oh, yeah. I mean, him, it's, it's him and the rock. Like most people just love both of those dudes. Can we get those two in a movie? Can they, can, can they do something? Oh my God. You, you oh, should Jason Momoa both. is up there too. I mean, Paul Rudd's easily uh, <laughs> top three for sure. I just want to hang out with Paul Rudd for like a day. Me too. <laughs> I want to hang out with all three of those names we mentioned. The only reason I would put Paul Rudd above Jason Momoa is Jason Momoa has been like four things. Paul Rudd's been relevant for like <laughs> right. 20 years. Right. right. That's, true. But still, That's true. If we said, hey, Jason Momoa, you want to go like throw down at a bar and try to pull some tail? He'd be like, yeah. You realize I'd rather hang out with Jason Momoa more than anybody we've listed so far. I'm just making the point. I think Paul Rudd is uh, universally more like. <clears throat> right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. I mean, a lot of women that like Jason Momoa, they think he's hot. Fine, cool, enjoy him. Paul Rudd's just likable and funny. So <laughs> right. he's just a cool dude. He's just a yeah. He was great, and I love you, man. Peter Cleaver, yeah, come on. Yeah, he's double O heaven. Double double. <laughs> hey there, Miss Money Push. Hey, there, Miss Money Push. Hey. <laughs> but the thing is, listen to how we're talking about those actors, Ant Man. I mean, I wasn't hyped to see Ant Man because of the Edgar Wright situation. You guys can go back and look at the news about that uh, movie. But I knew Paul Rudd always delivers at least a likable protagonist, and he brought that charm to Ant Man. And Ant Man became, became one of my favorite MCU flicks. So that you know, you want that kind of charisma, that kind of likability to be associated with your superhero. With Brie Larson, she's always just antagonistic and prissy and, oh, it's about me. Look it, you're the late player in this game. Like, nobody needs you. The story doesn't need you. The fans don't want you. Disney doesn't need you. But you keep making yourself known as this unlikable piece of trash. And I, I'm getting tired of just seeing her. Like, get me Elizabeth Olsen or Scarlett Johansson or some other woman in the movie and give them a bigger part to do. Captain Marvel sucks. Yeah, give yeah, give them their own movie because they've been in, they've been this shit for 10 fucking years. Well, did you see that Disney Plus is going to have a Vision and Scarlet Witch TV show? Yep. Ew. Here's the problem with all these announcements. It fucking spoils the movie. No, there's no stakes. No one's going to die. We're just going to market everybody. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely not and that's kind of the, you know, the arrogance of Disney at this point, not just with Marvel, but with Star Wars, obviously, and with Disney Plus and they announced the fucking um, Falcon and Winter Soldier show too for Disney Plus. So it's like, guys, stop, you know, wait till the fucking big event happens and then run your chops about the other shit. The other thing, too, is, you know, again, you know, I think that, you know, whatever they told 
Brie Larson, when she was initially talking shit before Captain Marvel came out, you know, she's clearly feeling her oats right now. You know, she's got, she has that, I guess, apparently it was supposed to be a movie on Netflix that people really didn't like anyway, but you know, she has that shit coming on. She had her face in Times Square for the show that no one was eventually going to watch anyway. And obviously Endgame coming out, they had her, they have her in the one, uh, in the one trailer. So she's, she's feeling her oats right now. And it's definitely that, that thing you see with a lot of actors and actresses when they're getting, up there and they start mouthing off, you know, but you know, Brie Larson's not going to learn from Megan Fox or Martin Lawrence or all these other stars that piss everyone around them and piss the fans off. You know, she's, you know, she's got to, she's got to fall face first and, you know, we'll see what happens after Endgame, man. But yeah, she's, she, it's just like, she thinks that she thinks the unlikable gimmick is what her fans want to see. And it's like, you know, they're here to watch Endgame. <clears throat> not you mouth off, honey. Well, no, I, th- I think I think it's not the unlikable thing she's thinking, but I think she's she's being she's being real, and she's like, yeah, I'm being you know a tough woman, and that's what they want. It's like, no, you're just being an unlikable bitch, and it's right. just nobody wants that. It's like you're just being preachy. And it's like, yeah, we get it. We know what we know what you're trying to do, and it's annoying. Just quit. Yeah, and yeah it's like, it's like this shit doesn't dick, work. Dude. Yeah, you're not going to be the first one to break the mold being unlikable, where people come to see you despite you being unlikable. This shit never works out. It just doesn't, you know. And you sure as shit aren't some you know big enough. You haven't won. You know, you don't have, you don't have that legend status where you can act like a fucking diva and people still, for some reason, give you a job. That shit doesn't work out all the time. So no, it doesn't really work out ever. Right. I mean, there have to be positive qualities about certain people for them to continuously get work. And right. I think you can only hide behind an Oscar win for so many years and so many movies until it's like, yeah, I want an Oscar. Yeah, but you didn't do shit for a decade, and you're really hard to work with, and you're not that talented. So, <laughs> I mean, look at uh, look, look at uh, look at Catherine Heigl. She got to work her way back up now. Oh you know? yeah, she was in everything Dude, for five th- minutes. That's the yeah, she was. The she was. I mean, if you want to stick it to to Oscar winners, look at Marlon Brando. Look at Jamie Foxx. These guys that these motherfuckers that won, you know, Halle Berry. These people that won Oscars, they did the exact same thing, you know. And Halle Berry, John Wick three is the first major thing she's done in the last what eight fucking years. Marlon Brando died with a shitty reputation for being unworkable, and after he ruined a production, and then Jamie Foxx, you know, got the big head, did the exact same thing. You know, he he derailed a lot of the shit for Miami Vice. And the last big thing he's done, he's been on the Joe Rogan podcast and he had a fucking direct to DVD movie come out about him being a cop in Vegas. Like this shit happens. Oh, you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna break the mold with this shit. You know, and again, you know, before people jump out and say, Oh, well, it's because you know, you're just not scared of like, you know, no, I'm not scared of a little brat ass little blonde haired chick. But the second thing is this shit she's done, she's doing what people have done before, and I promise you the same thing's gonna mm. happen. End game can ha- can end, and if Marvel says, you know what, you're too much of a fucking problem, you may get a couple things in between, but you and Catherine Hyde will be sitting in the same goddamn uh, office at the DMV looking to get your fucking driver's license. <laughs> they're they're gonna be auditioning for the same part and be like, oh, that that's nice, that's nice, and then you know try to try to fucking get it, but you know, yeah, thanks for coming out, ladies. <clears throat> <laughs> you know the Captain Heigl analogy is probably one of the best things you've said in a while, and I'm not knocking everything else you've said, but it really puts it into perspective. From a podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah because I mean, no, no, you, you remember she was in a lot, she was in a lot Every of Netflix, a lot, a lot of stuff, thing. a lot yeah. of stuff, and then all of a sudden, she said she she didn't like she didn't like the part she was in for. I think it was what was it? Um, Grey's Anatomy. No, it was Grey's Anatomy. It was, the, it, it was, it was a, yeah, knocked up. She didn't like the character she was playing. I was like, well. If you and here's the thing with actors, I never read the fucking script. If you had read the script beforehand and actually put it into context and been like, "Yo, this is not for me. I want to back out quietly," you'd been fine. But well, instead, I, I th- the other thing was that she actually read the script. She waited till the movie came out. She waited for it to become a hit, and then did all that bullshit. Yeah, and and it's the same thing with um, what the hell is that chick's name? Oh god, she was in Predator, the new Predator movie. A She's like, fun. yeah, yeah. She she's like, oh, one of the guys is you know a pedophile. It's like, say that. You know, when you find out about it during production, don't say about it afterwards when they're trying to advertise the fucking movie, make money for it's, it. It's oh yeah, it's always after the check clears. That's that's the that's the weird thing. And it's like it's never before we do this shit. It's only after the check clears where I have a problem with this motherfucker. But he, da, 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 da. you know, I got a problem with how people are portrayed in movies, or I have a problem with women being portrayed in movies. But I sure as shit didn't say that when I took it to my bank and they put it in my in my fucking bank account. Yeah, yeah it's True it's, words it's haven't been spoken in a while. Yeah, you know, and, and and it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, that that's a horrible, horrible thing. You should have like gone to some. You got to, you should have gone, you know, all up the ladder and like reported that, like the minute you the minute you you knew about it, not at a fucking press junket at six in the goddamn morning. Right. Uh, now, I, 
Now, what I do want to talk about, since we are just one week out, one week from now at this point, we'll be in the middle of the three-hour and three-minute movie. Yeah. Dude, spoiler um, alert. I didn't yeah, know oh, sorry. Time. I spoiled the runtime that they've announced. From... Did you want to go sit in a theater for 10 hours? Not really. I mean, mm-hmm. if it's, depends. It's Marvel. How good is the movie? <laughs> if it's Marvel, I mean, uh, you know. Yeah, Dion, I would have said that with you about two months ago before I saw Captain Marvel. We're actually, isn't, yeah, we're about a month removed from that movie. Yeah. It uh, <laughs> hadn't let me down. Even the lesser movies I still enjoyed. Like, I still like Doctor Strange. Thor Ragnarok on its first viewing was fun. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I I didn't like it because they're they're introducing a character in the eleventh fucking hour. It's like, why? And she's supposed to be the most powerful one, and Nick Fury knows her from from like back in the day. It's like, then why wasn't she like the fuck? Why wasn't she like before Thor or after Thor? She or was off Captain exploring Dem- mountains. God, she was doing something. I don't know. She was helping fucking green men, dude. She was helping intergalactic refugees relocate or something. I don't fucking for know. twenty she was, years. <laughs> she was saving the. Flirting. Apparently, apparently, a lot of planets didn't want those. Didn't want them. Okay. Well, I don't want the scrolls that they've sold us in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, that to me is the biggest. Everyone wants to bitch about the Mandarin. They want to bitch about other villains. Malekith, Ultron. I think the scrolls are the biggest lost opportunity in the MCU because you yes. had forever. You could have gone decades of who's the scroll, who's this, who's that. You could have done all kinds of crazy shit. But no, they're benevolent green people played by Me- Ben Mendelsohn. You know, like it doesn't matter anymore. Well, that's but the like, thing too. Ben Mendelsohn is an epic bad guy. And you have this dude who, yeah, he can play other characters. But how awesome would it have been to have Ben Mendelsohn be the the, the main scroll bad guy, whether it be Super Scroll or whatever. He's a fucking fantastic actor. And you kind of just turn him into this. Even the first part of the movie, you know, he's the menacing scrawl plant and shield and then oh well, i was looking to save my daughter it's like god damn it ben Mendelssohn, be a badass dude, dude don't yeah. be some you know don't be et with pointier ears and a bigger dick be fucking <laughs> cool. yeah. he is so good. also He's also like- also shout out to ben Mendelssohn for being just an amazing fucking actor because there's yeah. been so much shit in the last like three years it's like just just keep doing what you're doing man just keep dude, going that right been hot since dark knight rise that dude yeah, yeah keep yeah place. keep going man keep going i got yeah. a big question for you guys who hit me? Is Ben Mendelsohn the best actor to have appeared in any Disney Star Wars flick? New actor, not Harrison Ford. You know, right, right, right. That. of the new introductions, do you think his portrayal of Director Krennic is the best performance from any Disney Star Wars flick? Folks in the chat, please answer yourselves. But I'm just I mean, I'm thinking about him. Who who's done a better job? Well, I mean, obviously Razy Diddley. <laughs> Razy Diddley's the best. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a it's a. See, I really like Benicio del Toro, but I have to separate myself from that because I like Benicio del Toro, not his character and the circumstances of when he was in the Last Jedi. DJ, um, but yeah. he—I mean, because he was just such a great sniveling little shitty dude. But God, Ben Mendelsohn is just so <laughs> fuck. God, he's well, so well, goddamn well, and, cool. And, and, and and also, yo, you have Maz Mikkelsen as well. Maz Mikkelsen was awesome, but then like, yeah, the dad thing was kind of was kind of weird for Rogue One. I mean, if you take everything into in, in its totality. I mean, Ben Mendelsohn just being like, we were this close to great. Like, that shit is just... Like, what other character do you believe would go up to Darth Vader pleading and then, like, trying to hustle him? Like, it just... It's just... <laughs> and then gets force choked. And then, as he's choking, he's like, oh my god, I'm back in charge. Like, even though he almost got choked, he's like, okay, I'm back in charge. It's like, god damn it, he's so good. <laughs> he tried hustling the, the, the most evil thing in fandom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the most dangerous motherfucker in the galaxy, he's just like trying to like tattletale and hustle his job back. It's like, Ben Mendelsohn, why are you so goddamn cool? <laughs> can can we have him in in, in in a in something else? Like so he need, he needs to, he needs to be a Bond villain really bad. He really does. Oh, he needs yeah. to be on the list for sure. He needs to be on the list of dudes for sure. We don't need to talk about James. Yeah, Bond. I'd rather not discuss that right now. It kind of hurts my feelings. Yeah, we'll get into it. I got. Are you triggered? Uh, You're gonna be. <laughs> you you will be you will be yeah <laughs> so uh back to the question though that i had uh has any any of this like behind the scenes drama infected the uh hype that you feel for endgame at all no. at all one percent no not one no, no not really I, I feel like a fanboy but no especially when they released was it the second trailer which was more of a tv spot that shit got me i was ready to fucking headbutt my wife man i was pumped you're yeah. normally ready to headbutt your wife. Come here, girl. I mean, I watched the pro kicker once. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> context, context. Yeah, <laughs> context <laughs> is king. <laughs> um, I would be lying if I said I didn't think about these things in the back of my mind every time I look at an Endgame 
uh, trailer. Uh, you know, like when I saw the Hot Toys released, well, not the Hot Toys released, but the uh, pre-order, I was like, oh man, I gotta get Thanos, Iron Man, and Captain America, and then I'm like, yeah, but they secretly fucking hate all of us, and they let Brie Larson, you know, run her mouth, so I'm like, ah, maybe I won't buy that one thing. I'll still see the movie, but I might not buy the $200 action figure, so those types of things do affect me, and I know they affect other people, and people think, oh, it's stupid, whatever. Look, I'll go see the movie. I've been invested since 2008. I've seen everyone in theaters, mostly opening day. I've liked all but one of them. Um, but yeah, those just small things like that. Like I decided I'm not going to go get the new Avengers Endgame action figure wave. I'm like, eh, you know, let, let them talk some more shit. Somebody else can buy it, not me. So that is how it affects me. Uh, I've also not watched as many MCU flicks. Like I plan to do a marathon up before uh, Endgame. And now I'm like, ah, you know, I'll just see this movie and try to get over with it and get into the next thing. So uh that's how i feel you guys don't have to feel that way i, I personally feel. would like to think that at least robert downey jr and josh Rowland still like us and paul rudd oh paul rudd loves us <laughs> shout out to my boy paul rudd yeah we're best Paulie. friends one day. go chiefs i don't know yeah i mean i, mean, I think that that's definitely you know there's nothing wrong with it and i think that's that's definitely part of the risk when you are Promoting a franchise, creating a franchise, and if you know if someone in your circle does something wrong, they can affect the whole, you know, essentially affect the bottom line. So again, you're not, you shouldn't feel any iota of, you know, damn, you know, I should, you know, yeah, you should feel that way, especially when it's someone who's being so abrasive and being abrasive on purpose. I mean, again, it, there's nothing wrong with wanting to to get a point across, but when one you're doing it at at, at you know at the at the at the at the behest of a franchise they t- chose you to be a part of one, it comes off as disingenuous. And then two, when you're trying to say, Oh, well, I'm using this platform to, you know, to, to bring up issues that I think are important. You know, you know, you're not, you're waiting until you, you're waiting before something has been released. And then you're just pointing out things. You're you, you pointing out and saying random shit when you're at a press truck and for a giant movie, isn't you being an activist, it's you being an asshole and it's you <laughs> just pointing out things you see like a little kid in the store. That's not you being an activist. That's not you being positive. That's not you being a problem solver. And I think that's the other thing where people don't like, it's not because she's a woman, you know, it's because, Hey, if anyone, whether you're at work, whether you're working on a small independent project and someone that you're supposed to be working with is just doing things to garner attention for themselves under the guise of being, you know, justified, that's unlikable. That's one of the most unlikable. And then even to make it down to a smaller level, everyone knows someone in their own circles that are fucking unlikable for shit like that. And that's what's so funny. Is she doesn't get that. And it's like, you're being unlikable. It ain't got shit to do with us disagreeing with you. Stop being an asshole, Brie. Damn. Well, the other thing, too, she tries to call attention to help and, you know, bring attention to things that aren't even real problems. It's not like it's not a problem that affects me. It's like, well, we need more of this. It's like, it's in movies already. Quit complaining and just, you know, tell people people should go see it if they want to see it. You hide these uh, ideals behind a brand name. And that's the only reason Captain Marvel made money, because it's hidden under a brand name. If that movie would have been uh, an independent superhero flick, that thing would have flopped harder than Hellboy. It wasn't, you know, this groundbreaking piece of cinema. It's just another chapter in this thing that everybody goes to see. So, and, and the stuff she calls for, it's like, oh, thanks, Brie. We achieved that 20 years ago. Well, I, I think the other thing, too, is, you know... You know, acting as if, you know, oh, you know, this is a huge, you know, win for 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 young women and blah blah blah, blah. And, and that's fine. Like, don't get me wrong. That's you know, when you have someone that puts a project forth that is like that, that's really cool. But but is it though? Because Wonder Woman literally did it eighteen months prior, and all these people aren't. No, no, no. I'm not saying for comic book movies. I, I'm saying you know, if it's if it's like a movie about you know historical character or historical event, that's awesome, right? That's something that actually happened. That's something that has a little bit more of an outreach socially. But the thing that people like Brie and the people that tried to make Wonder Woman about that is, this is a kickoff for a franchise. They're not doing this. Marvel's not doing this. DC's not doing this. They're not doing this to try and right some wrong. They're doing this to launch a franchise. She, what she needs to realize is Captain Marvel isn't there because they want to gardener you know, uh, a fist bump in the crowd at a fucking march. They're doing it because after Endgame, they're going to have to have something in place for the franchise to go forward 
forward with. That's what this is. They ain't trying to help you out, Bree. They're trying to make something to make more money off of it. And you misguiding the conversation to where it's about, oh, well, you know, we shouldn't have, you know, white guy critics. Like, they're like, whoa, bitch, we try to make money. We got, we got people who work for us. I got to pay the fucking bills. This ain't about you. It's about us giving a groundwork for our fucking business. And, you know, it's that, that that's the fucking difference that she clearly doesn't get. No, not you're... I think we're all on the same page with all this shit. It just, it, I really wanted to just get over Captain Marvel and then go full bore. Hey, Iron Man's back. Captain America, Thor, Spider Man, blah, blah, blah. All these things that we want to see. Yeah. But oh, it's yeah. just the media keeps doubling <clears throat> down on this shit. And you, it, look, Captain Marvel emboldened them to be dicks, bigger dicks than they actually have. People out there are listening. The fans hold the power. Guys, all you're doing is hurting repeat viewings. You're hurting merchandise sales. Look, if the box office is great, remember though, the box office, Nick knows this firsthand, is split so many different ways. The grosses is completely different than the profit from a movie. Right. You know, right. the theaters got to get paid. Other people got to get paid. Actors got to get paid. All this other, the crew get, has to get paid. All these people have to get paid. Yeah. And I mean, even, even the international box office, the thing I've always heard, I've always heard across the board is that the number that you see on um, Box Office Mojo or whatever it is, that gets split up to where only 40% goes back to the main production company. That means only 40% goes back to Disney. So even though it's $677 million, 40% of that goes back to Disney. The other, the other 60% goes to the, the theaters where you know it was shown. I'm just saying, folks, you got to take this into account, especially Disney if you're listening. And we know we know Lucasfilm and Hasbro know who we are, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. But <laughs> if you're out there, Disney, right. respect the fans. We hold the power. Because you can throw a billion dollars at a fucking theme park, but if you piss us off and no one shows up, well, you just threw a billion dollars down a bottomless pit. And yeah, you'll eventually get it back because it's Disney World and people go there out of whatever, but your brand will be uh, slightly marred. Uh, remember how quick the uh, Star Wars franchise has tried to get over The Last Jedi. So remember, folks, they listen to us. We have the proof. If they acknowledge something or they ignore it, um, you know, you can basically read into that and figure out how they feel about it. Ryan Johnson in this new Star Wars trilogy ain't happening, no matter what Kathleen Kennedy says. Uh, and if it is, uh, if they do have some plans for it, uh, they wouldn't have said it at Star Wars Celebration because it would have been a massive flood of booze. So, yeah, <laughs> he is he is a persona non grata with the fans of Star Wars. Well, and, and again, that's you know, even if unintentionally, right there, that point is perfect because. He did the exact same fucking thing. And what happened? The motherfucker got cut out from the whole process. And that's not because, you know, they, you know, even, even, even if, you know, people who are going to defend him and him, you know, his bullshit, you know, you can't, they, none of them can deny Disney fucking took him off at the end of the day. Disney fucking took him off that project. And even so they at least squash all the conversation about the trilogy that they were just going to gift wrap it. Because he was opening his fucking mouth and running it and trying to be adversarial to everyone who paid money to go see his goddamn movie. Which, you know, when you say it like that, you're like, wow, that was really fucking stupid. Eventually, Lucasfilm said the same thing. Why are we letting this motherfucker talk smack to people who paid money to go see the movie? And she's doing the same goddamn thing. This idea that she's exempt from the consequences of that is what's so weird after... The, the the epic conclusion to this 10 year franchise. It's like, what did you like? I don't, I don't like this is a lose lose for her. If you're right, then everyone's gonna shit on your movie. If you're wrong, they're gonna, the movie's gonna do well. They're gonna look at you and be like, yeah, we don't need you anymore, sister. See ya. And, <laughs> and that's, and that's what's so crazy to this. That's what's so crazy. You know, like even if you're right, you fucking lose because they're not gonna want someone who's trying to start fights with the media with the fans and with the people who make the fucking movie you you trying to with all three groups what is wrong with her not to you know you could go run to the netflix but apparently that movie that you made sucked dick so what are you trying to accomplish here by the way dion nick and kendall i have some good news we have 710 people watching Yay. now we only have 232 thumbs up so folks if we get ah. to a thousand thumbs up we're going to give you a good morning pop culture. And a lot of people are saying, I hope it happens. So for your fellow uh, fandom menace fans, give this video a thumbs up so they can get a good morning pop culture. Cause we're going to stay up and do after hours and all that shit, but we are going to give you good morning pop culture. We're only what? 767 uh, subscribe thumbs up away. So there we go. It's moving up. It jumped to two. There we go. There we go. There now we it's go. happening. Yeah. So, you never know who's going to show up on good morning pop culture. Yeah. I mean, Aerosmith could be there. Wait, really? Who else? 
Oh man, fashioning a kayak. A log. <laughs> a log. <laughs> wow, you really, you really and, sold that one. If people are asking when the Good Morning Pop Culture is going to be. It's going to be tomorrow morning, Friday, uh, April nineteenth, normal time, early. I'll get up. I'll get a shitload of coffee. I'll get wired, and I'll start. Uh, I'll have a big party, Dion. That was for an audience Ooh, of one. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, we're, yeah, we're getting but there. We need, but we need a thousand thumbs up. Yeah, we're, yeah. Only, we're only a third of the way there. So uh, make it happen, mm-hmm. folks. You guys want it. I know Laura Ryan stole my fan fiction story once that she told me directly on Twitter. So uh, we want to give it to you guys. So hit that thumbs up button. Smash the melee button. Pound the muff button. Uh, tickle the... I don't... <laughs> Wait, what? Keep, keep going. Keep going. I'm tickle the you. ivories? I don't know. <laughs> you had my curiosity. <laughs> well, let's give some attention to the listeners. So we've had a few super chats roll, and we want to give uh, our respect to them. So first off, Logan Michael says, "Hey, Dion, horse, 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 horse." <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, the Ghost Legend Double O One. Thank you very, very much. Roses are red. Lando is black. They really thought we'd forgive them if they brought the Senate back. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everyone should check out Mahler's Captain Marvel video. It's a work of art. I, was uh, I, tonight. I will watch that tomorrow. I'm working on our... I thought we were done with Captain Marvel. There's one more. Uh, let's see. Echo Base Network says, Nicholas Glenn here. New channel is up and would love all the WCBS feedback. Well, Nicholas Glenn, the new channel, guys, is called Echo Base Network. They're over on Facebook. It's a Star Wars channel. Well, Echo Base is where the, the, uh, the Rebels were on Hoth, so check that out. But uh, I'm going to be subscribing there in just a moment. So help a fellow fandom menacer out and check out their channel. Uh, we're, guys, we're changing entertainment one day at a time by helping each other. I mean, that's how we're able to do the shit we do at Star Wars Celebration and all the stuff we got planned in the future. So Echo Base Network. I'm going to go hang out on that channel, as the, and I'm going to go under the name General Veers. Ooh, prepare your men. That's right. <laughs> You'll die in a deleted scene, but we'll doesn't cut it out matter. of the movie, and no one will know that you're dead or alive. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We will destroy that main generator. Yeah. Mm. Target maximum firepower. That's right. The di- the distance was only, uh, what was it, decimal 1728 or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, either way, they blew that shit sky high. Dion, have you played with your AT-AT walker yet? <laughs> oh, jeez. Absolutely. Did you put batteries in it? I have not, man. I was just reliving the whole, uh, uh, just having the goddamn thing. So it's been sitting out, just be moving the head, kind of act like it's a dog, you know. But yeah, I really want to get the uh, 2000. I think it was the 10 edition, but now it's 500 bucks. I'm not spending 500 dollars on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't blame me with that one, dude. Not at all. But uh, speaking of packages and stuff, I went to the PO box yesterday. Let me show you guys. I'm not going to show it on the channel because it's I can't. Let me show you guys. How many things we got at the P.O. Box? This is a record. Uh, they were about to call me because there was so much shit there. And when I got there, I had my own personal cart. So <laughs> there you go. Check the check our personal chat, dude. That is no joke. And for folks that are out there wondering, I want to see it. It'll be the title card. Holy uh, shit. Night. Yeah. Jeez, man. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, look at the size of that package. Hey, uh, hey. Right. It says up, but it's going sideways. No. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to tell you guys tomorrow I will upload the um, other PO box video. The hotel Wi-Fi was really really bad, as you can tell during yeah. the live streams. It was pixelated yeah, as hell. Why? Yeah, I know, right? So uh, I wonder why the alarm went off. It was it five five in the morning, three in the morning, one thirty in the morning. Oh god, <laughs> Nick would have died. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you were done, Nick. So, dude, I woke up. I was like, "Where's everybody at?" And you know, we'll tell that story on after hours, folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excited for. Uh, Wanderer says. Don't you point those dirty green sausages at me. No. So it's funny we bring up the sausage talk because I shit you not. I watched a documentary today that I thought was about pro wrestling, but the first 20 minutes was about sausage. I mean, the that casings was... are hard to make and, you know, you get all that meat in the casing, you know, things. Uh, I think things that was happen. just WrestleMania nine. <laughs> was Virgil on that show? Uh, no, I don't think he was on that one. Then it wasn't about sausage. No. <laughs> nor, nor, nor fuck money. <laughs> or meat sauce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was this weird documentary. It's called like The Legend of Two Thumbs, a Chicago something. I was like, all right, well, I was just in Chicago. I'll check it out. And you think it's going to be about a pro wrestler. And it eventually was. But at first, it was about his sausage factory that he owns. Is that a euphemism? No, it's a literal <laughs> sausage making facility. Oh. That's where I, he makes I, his money. He pro wrestles on the side. Was he? Wait, hold on. Was his name Abe Froman? 
No, but he does refer to himself as the Sausage King multiple <laughs> times in the documentary. It's on Amazon. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. That's setting up for the title bout in a cage. Him versus I know, Abe but remember, Froman. Abe Froman never shows. It, it would just be Ferris Bueller versus this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, this guy has the edge over Matthew Broderick. I think so. I don't know. Magic Broderick's kill people. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that's, that's true. That's very, very true. That's a spicy sausage. Damn, that hurts. Mm. Well, that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> How did it happen, man? How'd they get burned? The car caught fire. <laughs> uh, Alpha Terra Nima says, sorry I couldn't meet you guys when you were here. Here's hoping my schedule isn't forked during the next meetup. Well, uh, Alpha Terra Nima, we'll be giving you guys ample notice about meetups in the future since... How many people were at that bar? That place was jammed. A lot. It was a lot, dude. Yeah. It, was a, it, was, it was a lot of people. It we was couldn't... a chance. I was like, oh man, I hope at least 20 people show up. What the? <laughs> Before we ever got there, there were like 40 or 50 waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah there were. <laughs> it was shoulder to shoulder. Everyone was in a great mood. Everyone was so happy to meet us. It was weird signing autographs, but it was cool. Yeah, there was more people there than at Kilroy. I don't understand that reference, but I still think. <laughs> But Alpha Teranima, I'm saying you didn't make it because you are uh, one of our most frequent listeners. I see your name on almost everything we do live. So uh, it'll happen. Don't worry. This was just the beginning for us. You know, we talked about last year being the best year for the channel. This year's already beat it in the first four months and 18 days. So oh, yeah. we are kicking ass at levels unheard of uh, across YouTube. So we want to thank everybody. A uh, misfire gaming says fellow Cincinnatian and longtime listener only briefly saw you guys while walking around celebration. Well, misfire gaming, I wish you would have said, Hey, we could have talked about uh, how overrated skyline is in front yeah. of Kendo. Oh God. <laughs> it, that wouldn't have bothered me though. I'd be like, I'm sure it is overrated, but it, they serve chili dogs and I like those. Dude. <laughs> it, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, of course. Kendo likes chili dogs. God, I get shit on for white women around here. Yeah, dude, it's a hot dog with a bun and fucking chili and mustard. Hey, man, and it's a white woman cheese. with a pulse. Come on. How, how, you know, but you, but Elon you can, Musk, you to mom, dogs. come on. Yeah, but see, the thing is, <laughs> you guys could go, hey, you want to go to Skyline? I will say no. If, a, hey, Dion, look, a white woman, you're not going to say no. That's the difference right there. <laughs> I would say <laughs> Moderation, no, sir. No, yeah. no, you wouldn't. You, you'd, you'd say maybe. That's, well, a, well, that's your mean, no. I mean, that's probably a little bit more accurate, Nick. But again. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying you you can like skyline, you know, fucking talk about sausages. Hot dogs are the are the even dumber cousins of sausage, but I get chat on. Oh hey, yeah, you want to bang a famous white woman? You know, oh no, I'm the bad guy now. It's not that it's a famous white woman, it's who you talk about. You pick your little pound cake, Lena Dunham. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's not like just because she's famous and white makes it okay. It makes it makes it better though. <laughs> uh, there are people that I see women I see every day that are you know a better choice than Lena Dunham and no one knows who the fuck they are including me well yeah I mean but you know you live your life I'll live mine I don't, I don't want to live your life for, <laughs> for my own sanity <laughs> <laughs> to paraphrase the Incredible Hulk your brain is like a bag of cats so there you go dude <laughs> Hang on. Got a police report in. Report of shots fired over here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. We're, we can't get into that on this show because we will go no. all night. <laughs> this is, folks, folks, if you can imagine, this is you, you get to spend an hour and a half, two hours with us like this. Imagine all of us in a room together like this for like five days. The energy is always this high. We don't just lay around quietly thinking, oh, yeah, it'll be fun later. No, it, it, like it, it, it literally starts with Jeff in the chat. You know, and, and anybody want to go get breakfast? And then it starts. That's yeah. the day. And it continues wherever we go. Like, I think we ruined Anna's Game of Thrones watching just because, <laughs> well, Dion and I did. And Nick One, I, we were fucking a joy to be there. Yes. Two, we were hilarious because yeah. it's us. And then yeah. three, People, if you invite someone over, just just you know, you know that people come over to watch something like they're not gonna sit there and we're all because she's like, oh, well, you know, I was like, come on, come on, this was fun. You're welcome. <laughs> no, Dion. You're welcome. She was like, yeah, you're welcome. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. hey, hey Dion. Hey man, yeah. you ever fucked a dragon woman? <laughs> <laughs> even then, even then, if you're that mad, you can always rewatch it because you know 
that's a possibility. Because Black yeah. 2019, come on now. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, if yeah, you, you you can either download it and watch it, or watch, if you have HBO or whatever, you can watch it again. Well, you so, guys like, were going on about that. I was sitting there reading some old Avengers comics. Yeah. I was having a great time. He was the best behaved. Yes. I was, dude. There's an old storyline storyline called Inferno that I had never read. I had only picked up a couple of the Spider Man books because I used to collect the until well, I still do the entire run of Amazing through up up through number eight hundred. And uh, the Inferno storyline is kind of bizarre. And I thought I'm gonna learn where it comes from. So I did, and I was really into it. You guys were just like bored with that. I thought the show looked like crap anyway, so I wasn't paying attention to it. But uh, sorry, well, Game of Thrones fans. You would, but you, th- you used to think the same thing about Lethal Weapon, and you're welcome for that one too, buddy. Yeah, but I don't like sword and sorcery at all. Like, I can get mm-hmm. into a cop drama, no problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. sword and sorcery is not my shit. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I can't, I can't get into that stuff. I just, it just doesn't yeah. appeal to me. It's just, yeah, it's not, I'm not going to sit and rip on it for two hours because I know a portion of our audience likes it, but it's just not for me. I, if I don't know about it or like it, I usually don't cover it because it's like, well, why? The night, the night is long and full of terrors. The night is dark as full of terrors. Eh, close enough, bitch. <laughs> hey, you can't even eat your own shit right, dude. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Wanderer says, no, you will not take my sausage from me. Um, <laughs> I'm glad the sausage is racing. It's true. I don't want to take it. Yeah, man. Uh, Billy Ritchie, this is probably the coolest super chat we've read so far. Hey, guys, last day at my old job today, and my last word to everyone was, party boob! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to make an exit, make it memorable. Now, now, did, now, did you spray that on your boss's car, or did you just pee it, up, pee it on the parking lot outside? Like, how did, how did you do that? Now, he pulled a Dennis Reynolds and uh, poured it in gasoline on the front lawn. Oh, That's okay, yeah, yeah, that'll work, too. Yeah. <sighs> Acid Blade 21, thank you very, very much. I was genuinely sad when I heard that Monkey Punch had died. I grew up watching Lupin the Third. I personally own all five seasons and all the movies on DVD spanning from 1969 to 2018. Well, Acid Blade 21, I am a fan just like you. I don't own everything because when Lupin, uh, well, not first came out, obviously, but in 20, 2003, when Adult Swim picked it up, and they started doing that dub. Uh, I was in high school, so I would tape it off TV. And then when I got a job in 2004, my first job, uh, DVDs of Lupin the Third were thirty dollars for like six episodes. And uh, I didn't really have all that money to pull or to spend on Lupin the Third, so I got a couple DVDs. And then when I got to college, I picked up a movie set. And now you can get seasons for twenty, thirty dollars. So I do have the newer. Sh- I have everything on Blu-ray, uh, the newer stuff. But uh, yeah, I was saddened too because you know. I may not have been the biggest Monkey Punch fan, but Lupin the Third's always been something I've enjoyed. Uh, River Antari says, I think Prima Donna would better suit Brie. I think that's a fair uh, title that she would love to oh, wear yeah. around on her shoulder. I like Brillo Pad. <laughs> Brillo Pad. I, <laughs> Ugh, I mean, let's not, let's not desecrate probably the one only redeemable quality she has. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, for deep cleaning? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Nick, you here's the point, and oh, you wow. are way over there. Right, right over there, buddy. It's been, it's been a while for you. Been a while for you, friend. <laughs> missed it yeah. by that much. We'll, we'll you better run lickety split to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy it when next time we're in the metropolitan area. Yeah, uh, want to go to New York? Well, no, New York wouldn't have any. Never mind, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, I just gotta tell you how happy I am to have spent two nights at my own home. Not a, I have been gone for over two weeks at this point. It was just like so draining, but I'm glad to be back. Yeah, that's how I felt Monday. You guys, I was like, you know, they're probably having a really good time right now, having a lot of fun. But goddamn, I am stretched on my couch just enjoying the silence of the outside and everything around me, and I couldn't be happier. You really did miss a good time on Monday, dude. Fogo de Chow was just as good as New Orleans. Oh, man. Uh, Anna and Jesse and I were having a laugh at – uh she was drawing a cup of water, and people kept coming over to look at it. And then you could tell that none of us wanted to leave because we just kept talking in the parking lot for probably 30 minutes straight. Yeah. <laughs> like they were trying to get an Uber or a Lyft and this and that, and we just kept talking and talking and talking. And we would look at our watches and keep talking about something else. So nobody really wanted to leave, but we had to. Yeah, I mean, I don't doubt that it was a great time, but I was thoroughly enjoying not being in Chicago. Yeah, well, we were in the suburbs at that point. Yeah, either way. Uh, let's see wonder says by the way one of those quotes is from lord of the rings and the other one is the exact quote from shrek 2 <laughs> i was not aware of that aurora i need to watch lord of the rings 
I need to watch Lord of the Rings still. I got the Blu-ray set right here. So uh, sometime after Endgame, folks, I will watch Lord of the Rings. Maybe we'll do that as a Patreon thing. My first experience with Lord of the Rings, and you guys can hear it. Oh, nice. That'd be fun. Yeah, well, you have to be on it since you, you actually like those movies. I do, yeah. So I just don't want to be like, uh, I probably will end up liking them. That's the thing. I know. It's almost like I just said that five fucking minutes ago. No, you uh, said Lethal Weapon and Game of Thrones. So I, I, you, I said you said that about Lethal Weapon 2, but you're welcome. Yeah. I was implying that you say that, but you end up liking them because... That's not you know, always true, man. I hate Godzilla 1998. You like it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it because it's bad. Don't you? Don't you make this about me? Is this, is this, is this the make this about Dion episode? <laughs> Isn't it always? Sorry, that's I mean, an Avengers quote. I keep throwing at you, and you keep not picking it up. I, I get it. it, but it applies. So I'm, you know, it's still funny. Isn't every episode about it? Like make it about Dion though, when it really comes down to it. I mean, yeah, but look at the success we've had. So I'm not gonna exactly. Complain. So what's he complaining about? <laughs> I want my reparate. Want my restitutions. I can't. I, I I did nothing wrong to you. I've only been yeah. your friend for a decade. He never once oppressed you. You did. You attributed Godzilla ninety eight to me. That is a question. how is that oppression? That's just more like insulting. That's a yeah. listen again. Matthew brought it, killed people before. That's why. See, that's, we're aware of that. <laughs> I think it's going to be the description of this episode on Podbean. Matthew Broderick killed people. Yeah, and fucking Mark Wahlberg kicked somebody with a brick. So what's your point? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a little bit more funny. Plus, he's so, he's so short. Yeah, but he blinded the guy, and that's not yeah. cool. Yeah. No. yeah. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, segue. Anyway. Red Pill Blurred says, a flat personality to go with that flat backside. And I'm sure in regards to Brie <laughs> Larson. Now, hold on. Let's not speculate. He could be talking about somebody else. Well, who have we discussed tonight that has a flat personality and a flat cheese plate of an ass? <laughs> Crazy Diddley. What? <laughs> Daisy Ridley smiles and seems really likable. I don't like Ray; she's a shit actress, but Daisy Ridley seems like a pretty decent person. That's true. I like will it, give you that one. But they're like, they're like Jeff. If you want to hang out with Daisy Ridley or Brie Larson, oh Daisy Ridley all day. Daisy Ridley oh, yeah. all day. I'd be like, you know, I don't really want to talk about your Star Wars movies because I don't like them, but I'd like to get to know you. Tell me what. So it what else like are you into? Yeah. yeah. Hey Daisy, are you into black guys? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure she's <laughs> again. God damn it. And you wonder why we made that point earlier. Yes. Yeah, that's a good Thank point, you. actually. I kind of walked into that one. Thank yeah, you, Tony you Stark. <laughs> you didn't just walk into that one. You dove head first, screaming and yelling with glee. <laughs> ah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, black eyes, Daisy. Ah! <laughs> they all float. Anyway, Grand Inquisitor. <laughs> God damn. Ooh, are we sure this isn't after hours? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My t- perception of time just goes yeah. in and out. We're just lobbing volleys at each other at this point. This is great. I know, right? I think it's because we secretly miss each other so much. I mean, I I, I wouldn't say secretly. (laughs) There's been numerous times where I've been sitting there going, damn, I really wish I was hanging out with the guys right now. That was like two hours ago. The best part is, though, the channel and the show keeps growing, so we'll eventually be able to turn it into something like that. And by eventually, I mean in 2020. Yeah, we'll have Bullshit Tower. Yeah. Uh, Dude, we'll, we'll just be like the pop culture equivalent of Tony Stark. Except yeah. we won't make uh, IntelliCrops. We'll make, I don't know. It's entertainment. Enter- podcasts. Shit. And we'll only uh, slightly see. be dickish about it. Only slightly. No, nah, we got to remain humble, dude. So many people that came up to us were nice and told us to keep up the good work. So uh, that true. is my directive. Uh, where are we at? Grand Inquisitor says, Nick, Brie is the next Charlize Theron. She will be unmarried in her 40s, demanding men step up and date slash marry her. She's close to sell. <laughs> She's damn. close to her sell by date. God damn. Oh my sure her sell by date. Oh, that's the that's a spicy one. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like she I remember yeah, reading that Charlie Stern like wanted somebody to date her, but I didn't know why. I was like, she seems hot. I've never where was the applications at? I didn't get one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> is there is like like is this like a Tinder thing or you gotta put in a picture in a short description? Like what 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 is this? You was know, it Tinder that says you have to verify your height. I have no idea. There was a thing about like people would claim to be six feet tall, but they'd be really short and it pissed off women. That's like every dating website. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to join one and put my height at five, seven. (laughs) But then like have a picture of you sitting next to some random dude. So they can be really fucking confused. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, uh, I'm the other one in the photo. (laughs) I I was off by like, I don't know, a foot. Almost a foot. Yeah. (laughs) 
sorry, you're not into giants. Well, what are you fucking racist? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was going for that one, but I can't, I can't say the real line on air. I heard the pause. I heard I the pause. You were I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save going. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. Sorry. I'm glad we get each other. Uh, Thunder Robot says, every time I hear the rise of Skywalker, I think of that porn story you read. Also, Dion stayed awake oh, in the last episode oh in episode nine, Rise of the Sausage. <laughs> well, Dion had to stay awake in that episode because one, we were all like in you know, same room and it was like noon. And I kept getting cold water dripped on me, so I couldn't have fallen asleep <laughs> last year. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Must have been a leak in the room. Yeah, yeah that sounds like a tragic <laughs> accident. You know what was weird is I actually as soon as I got home, I saw a commercial for that fire repair place that was up there. <laughs> oh, sir, oh, on Surf Pro. Yeah, I was like, wow, this is kind of awkward. Yeah, maybe he should have done a fucking, they should have done a quote before the fucking Sunday night. That would have been nice. Yeah. Right? Jeez. <laughs> well, I think, okay, we're going to read the next Super Chat, and then we're going to move on to the next segment, because it's a perfect segue. So, American, excuse me, the American Mythos says, have you guys seen Doomcock's new video on the meaning of the rise of Skywalker? Ray will be a CNN reporter in the next movie. Hashtag without respect, we reject. Oh, God. <laughs> I have not had a chance to watch Doomcock's video. I'm a big Doomcock fan, a Doomcock yeah. enthusiast, if you will. Uh, I'm going to watch his. I'm going to watch Mauler's. I'm going to try to catch Razor Fist's new video and uh, Retro Blasting's new video. Those are some of my personal favorite YouTubers. And, of course, Gary from Nerdrotic. But uh, remember, we came home Tuesday night from uh, Star Wars Celebration. So we're still kind of tired. But I will check out Doomcock's video. I have a Star Wars video to make for myself. Um I got a lot to say about Star Wars celebrations, like the feeling on the floor. And it's not all negative. It's, you know, it's a pretty interesting take, I think. So you guys need to be on the lookout for that. But uh, the American Mythos, I will check out Doomcock's video because, like I said, I'm a big Doomcock fan. Yeah. By the way, guys, we have 672 watching. We have 415 thumbs up. So uh, remember, a thousand, you know, good morning pop culture. So let's make that happen. You never know who might show up. You never know who. So, guys, let's play a quick game of hashtag explain a film plot badly. Are you ready? Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, fuck. Let's do it, baby. All right. A girl tries to sneak out, but is caught by her dad, and her brother has to bail her out. Star Wars. There you go. Now, let's start talking about. I'm actually watching that right now. I have the Avengers on right now. As soon as I said some shit about Marvel, I turned on the Avengers. I was like, eh, this movie actually kicks ass. Yeah. So, I'm trying to convince myself to be excited. <laughs> that's sad that I have to convince myself. But yeah. so have you guys heard the official bullshit news from uh Lucasfilm? No, no bullshit news, no. Okay, so this is hot garbage and it pisses me off. This comes from the force.net. Disney officially renames Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. Oh okay. So, so it's no longer it's no longer Star Wars Episode 4, it's just called A New Hope. Yeah, isn't that dumb? That's stupid. Very stupid. I I don't know why you're doing that. That just makes no sense. Like oh, just... I can tell you why. Okay. Because the move comes as Disney is setting up to launch their new streaming service called Disney Plus and wanted some continuity across the Star Wars saga. This isn't the first time this has happened. So are they getting rid of all Star Wars episode whatever and it's just replacing it as Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back? I mean, I guess it's so hard for people to say Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I, I mean, didn't Vince McMahon try that with WrestleMania? So he didn't know what number they were on, and but he forgot the fact that you know we all fucking learned how to count a long time ago. And you yeah. know the internet exists, and you know yeah. we can, you can read about you know what happened to at each event. So it, Vince, it wasn't WrestleMania play button; it was WrestleMania Thirty One, dude. Yeah. The only thing I will give him credit for is he actually had the audacity, a.k.a. the balls, to name WrestleMania 30, WrestleMania XXX. It's true. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll give him that one, yeah. Well, WrestleMania Triple X oh, wasn't God. exactly what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, it well, I mean, it's it's it, it's it, it's Vince. If you know anything about the man or look up any videos about him, he's a crazy fuck. Well, the thing is that pisses me off is it keeps... You think after Star Wars Celebration, we'd be coming off of this high. I mean, I didn't like the trailer. We'll talk about the trailer together since we actually have not talked about it together on this show. I did it on the High Council. But we talk about, uh, you know, Celebration. We come. We have a good time. We leave happy. You know, the fans are great. Hell, Lucasfilm, the people that I talked to were really nice to me. Everything was kind of cool. And then they do dumb shit like this. And the reason this pisses me off, and I don't mean to, like, make a big point out of nothing, but they just keep shitting on the legacy of these movies. It's like, 
can you just leave it the fuck alone? Like, stop changing it. P enough people have problems with the special edition changes, and you guys are more than justified to have your complaints. But to just keep changing shit to get in line with your piss-poor movies, I don't buy into that, and I'm not okay with that ever. You know, you should make your movies, your new ones, fall in line with the old ones because that's what came first. I have always said this before, Dion, to you. I always yes. called it Star Wars Prime. Everything has to fit that first movie because that's what came first. And The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, to a sl slightly lesser degree, have done that incredibly well. And by slightly lesser, the whole Princess Leia sister thing is what I'm talking about. So no one has to infer what I mean. But I have so many problems with them just trying to be like, well, Episode 7 is this and that. Just look it. Episode titles are a part of Star Wars. It's meant to be like an old serial. I mean, it, it just is another essence of Star Wars that's being taken away, stripped away by Disney because they don't understand what they're doing with the property. And it's so overt. And the nice thing about Star Wars, though, is that the fans are smart and they pick up on this bullshit and they don't put up with it. Uh, Marvel, the fans are, you know, it's a more diverse group. And I'm not talking about of uh, ethnicity, etc. But it's a a bigger group because it's the modern cool hip thing. A lot of Star Wars fans have died off and a lot of Star Wars fans are older and uh, you know, they'll still remember this shit. They won't put up with it. So I just, this pisses me off to no end that they have to keep changing Star Wars to, uh, you know, match the garbage stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and the best thing, is, not the best thing, excuse me. The, the worst thing is that it's fucking depressing, right? So, you know, before, you know, having to deal with Lucas, keeps going back and changing things and then and at the very least it's it's a reminder that people who are in their mind up on the mountaintop don't necessarily get what the no they don't know what the fuck they're doing you know out and and that's what's so depressing is the mo part of the reason why these films are so loved is because like you said Star Wars Prime is so goddamn good and even the name was something that you know, inspired uh, a spark in your imagination. It was Star Wars, A New Hope, Star Wars, Empire Strikes, Star Wars, Episode One, The Phantom Menace. Like it, the the it, the names sounded cool. And when you're going back and changing the name of something, you know, it's you. You know, to me at least, making a point of, oh well, this isn't ours, but we're gonna change it because we want to do this shit with it. Like you're not you're not already proud of the legacy that it had beforehand, which you know they proved that with these past movies. But changing the fucking names, it's like we get it. You don't want everyone to remember that George Lucas made this shit up first. I get that. I understand. You know this is yours now, whatever. But to change the fucking names, like what? Why? What specific reason outside of you wanting to take credit for someone else's fucking homework does this does this serve? And it's fucking depressing, man. It's really really depressing like it's, it's, it's forgetting where you came from and that's what's so goddamn saddening about it yeah it, look at folks the best thing you guys can do is uh do exactly the opposite of star wars episode eight which is they told you to forget the past kill it if you have to remember the past because that's when star wars was uh pure and good and uh everyone felt welcomed and there wasn't this schism created by a multi-billion dollar national corporation who sucks so I just wanted to bring that point up tonight because it really, really, really irks me that it, it now people are saying, well, it's for Disney plus and they can, uh, you know, have it to where they can uh, put the movie on there right away. But uh, last time I checked Disney plus wasn't going to get Star Wars because Kathleen Kennedy had allowed the rights to Star Wars to be sold to TNT, the broadcasting rights and now that shit. And now it's not the case. It's like, do these people know what they're doing ever? No. Oh. Oh huh, no! It seems like it seems like every every week or so, it's just like, oh, they screwed up again, and they're gonna have to wait a little longer to make well, you know. Their... They contradict themselves constantly. Oh yeah. <clears throat> well, even you know, and even to 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 Brian Last Name's point, well, they want to be able to push it in between. You don't have to name anything. Everything episode this, episode that. You no, know, if anything, that's the one the one silver line that came out of shit like Solo was that you don't have to have Star Wars episode four and a half or Star Wars episode three and a half Solo. You don't have to have Star like you can still have the main films. You know, obviously, I don't want to do it, but you can still have the main be episode this, episode that. It tells you where they happen chronologically. You don't have to fill in the gaps with episode numbers or or subtitles it can just the middle things can be their own thing you know you don't have to change things to accommodate shit that may or may not happen the only thing that's for sure is the main the feature films 
You know, that's yeah. what differentiates them from the shit in the middle. It differentiates them from the books. It differentiates them from upcoming TV products. It differentiates them from shit that failed and isn't going to happen, i.e. Ryan Johnstein's bullshit. Like, it, it, that's the names were cool, and it really brings you into the story. You know, it's episode this. Oh, it's another chapter in this story. And, you know, going back and changing that is just, you know, it's damaging your own brand for no reason. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Disney. That's all I can say. <clears throat> yeah, bastards. <laughs> so, do you want to talk about something that's even more infuriating than uh, you know the little hiccup that is the Disney Star Wars naming fiasco? Oh, why the hell not? Yeah, yeah, let's go let's, for it. Let's end this show by burning everything down that we hold sacred. Burn it down! Yeah. So, uh, show of hands by everyone in the chat. Who likes James Bond? Oh, I do. I do. I do. You know what, Kendo? Me too. Because those are the two words I would never associate with James Bond, but now that is the fucking case, apparently. Yeah, I saw that the other day on the way home from Chicago, and I wanted to crash my car. Yeah, but I well, didn't. I'm glad you didn't, because Daniel Craig's punk ass isn't going to buy you a new one. No. Even though Neither he's L337. Oh, well, she's she's <laughs> trash. I don't know how she keeps getting work. Anyway, though, this news comes from the Daily mail i've seen this on multiple websites and uh, if you ever wanted me to skip a james bond movie in theaters well this is how you fucking do it yep. a me too makeover for james bond fleabag star phoebe waller bridge is is drafted in by producers to meet daniel craig and work on a new film script before i go into this dion tell me how in any alternate reality this is a good idea um, do I have a week to do this homework assignment or I gotta do this shit? Like, uh, spoiler alert, it's not possible. This is the oh, dumbest. Thank God. Okay, look, real world, uh, these movies are fantasy. These movies are the male fantasy. These movies are a certain genre. They're a certain thing. We've seen with Star Wars, we've seen with Captain Marvel, when you try to infuse, uh, I'm gonna call them fringe politics because not everybody that goes to see these movies, believes and buys into this shit. You know, everybody buys into the brand. They love James Bond. They love the action, the, the women, the excitement, all that stuff. What they don't want to do is be beaten over the head by politics. And that's one thing that uh, Albert R. Broccoli did was they, they kept it in the Cold War, but they didn't get overtly political. They didn't make James Bond movies as political as other things. And they kept them alive for, what are we on, year 57 at this point. James Bond is what? In 1962. Yeah. But his dits of a daughter producer and her stupid stepbrother, Michael G. Wilson, the other producer, uh, over the last couple of years have turned James Bond into a joke. People want to say, well, James Bond was turned into a joke in the 1980s. Yeah, I agree. But then he was revived in the 90s and they brought back that Bond, uh, I don't want to say swagger because that's not right, but they brought the James Bond brand back in full style. Effect. Style. And ever since Daniel Craig took over, they're always chasing after whatever else is popular, and they're just a few years too late. So Casino Royale works, but Quantum of Solace wants to be the born identity, and it does not work. Nope. Skyfall is a good movie that I do enjoy, but it, the yes. parallels between that and The Dark Knight are unforgivable. And Spectre has moments of greatness, true James Bond greatness, but fails to achieve what I think it needs to to become one of the uh, best Bond movies in the franchise. For many reasons. First off, Daniel Craig. I like him as an actor. I think he's a very good actor. Probably the best actor outside of the role of Bond <clears throat> overall in terms of uh, quality of work. I won't say you know most memorable roles because I'll give that to Sean Connery. I mean, you were Bond and you were Henry Jones Sr. And I think everybody loves Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Anybody dislike that movie? I'm no, just saying, man. That was, that, that was my that was my first uh, that was the first Indiana Jones movie. The, yeah. the first one I saw was that. Yeah. I'm just I'm just saying you didn't include League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I wasn't done, <laughs> but I am now. <laughs> uh, no, but, but the point I'm trying to make is I, I think Daniel Craig is a very uh, good actor. I like him in other stuff, not as James Bond. The, the two producers that run the Bond franchise over the last, let's say, 10 years have, yes, they've made money, but I don't think they've made the Bond franchise what it could be or should be. And that is the other big movie event of the year. You have the Marvel flicks. You have your some DC flicks, you have your Star Wars movies, but the James Bond franchise is the longest running in history, or year 57, and I've never felt James Bond fatigue. My only big complaint as a fan at the time was uh, 
through the Daniel Craig ones, I was waiting for him to become Bond. It's like you watch Casino Royale. Oh my God, the Bond theme hits at the end. He's now James Bond. Then you watch Spectre, excuse me, Quantum of Souls, and it's like, I'm going to be James Bond at the end of this movie. And then in the next one, he's too old to be James Bond. And then the next one, they just gloss over all that. I mean, th these movies have a lot of problems going in. And I was just hoping for a fun action uh, movie, much like a John Wick, but with, you know, a little more sophistication. And I guess it's too much to ask because now you're bringing in Me Too politics into a James Bond movie. You know, last time James Bond tried to do something so topical, they ripped off Star Wars, they made Moonraker, and it's a piece of shit. So I expect this to be the modern day Moonraker, a piece of shit. Because anyone out there that doesn't know who Phoebe Waller Bridge is, that's L337 from Star Wars or oh, Solo Star it. Wars story. Yep. L337 to bitch about droid rights in a James Bond movie? No, you don't. You don't need James Bond movies to be dour and you know depressing. And they're really not that serious if you break them down. Look at Dr. No. no. Connery's cracking jokes every couple minutes. Yep. And then, anybody who takes them serious, anybody who thinks that it, it, you know they're pointing and need to be taken seriously is a fucking retard because it's it's basically a British spy going around with gadgets trying to like, you know, save the world all the time. Like it's it's just a fun romp. It's supposed to be a fun movie. That's it. That's all it's supposed to be. Yeah. If Look, this woman, from what I've seen of her work, and that's how you can judge actors and writers and so forth, uh, she sucks. Not a fan of what I've seen. I've seen that Fleabag trailer about 20 times on Amazon. Yeah, I, I don't watch it. She also has been she's been writing or written uh, Killing Eve and another show, another TV show called Crashing. And then there was another TV show called Drifters. So you know, I mean, They the all best. did so well, didn't they? Look, I wish her the best of luck in her future endeavors. Stay the fuck away from James Bond. I mean, there are so many other uh, creators out there that could be making James Bond films. One, they could be making them more frequently. And two, they could uh, keep them free of this garbage that infects every other part of entertainment. Look, if everyone was okay with all this shit, there wouldn't be channels like this. There wouldn't be a fandom menace. But the thing is, the people are fed up with this crap. But these companies keep pushing this, pushing this, pushing this. It's like, get over it, okay? These fucking weirdos in Hollywood don't represent us. I'm not saying we need to be represented by like, oh, I need a James Bond that looks like me. No, I, do, I would not want that at all. Andre the Giant would not be a good James Bond. <laughs> no. What I mean by that, though, is I want entertainment that crosses boundaries, international boundaries, age boundaries, every kind of boundary. Like, everyone can sit down and watch certain movies, and they fucking enjoy it. We'll just use Star Wars again, because our channel is built on that. Everybody can sit down and watch that first movie in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and go, I, there is something in there for me. But to be beaten over the head by James Bond, which is so different from what James Bond actually is about. Uh, it's off-putting. And uh, my interest, again, in something that I used to fucking love just continues to drop. It's like, you know, there's some evil force out in the universe. As you see this guy right there on YouTube, let's fuck with everything he likes. And I go, okay, well, I'm going to talk shit and monetize it, and then we're going to, you know, embarrass you, and the people are going to take you down, and you're going to have to go right back. So stop messing with the tried and true things. You know, we want that classic 007. Not this Me Too infused garbage. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have which, which even like, then he had, he had his Me Too movement no when uh, with uh, with um in Goldeneye when he talked to M for the first time, and that worked. And that was a quick line. They're not breaking any new boundaries. Remember, they tried to do this shit in the Living Daylights when uh, Kara Malovi's like James. What about whatever? And he waited to sleep with her till the end. That was how they handled it in the eighties. Because they were trying to like tackle the AIDS epidemic. Seriously, that's not me making this up. Go back and watch the documentary on the Living Daylights. It's on the Blu-ray and the DVDs, and uh, you'll hear that's how they try to handle the safe sex thing and all this stuff. So they've tried before, but then they go right back to it because you know with M's thing in Goldeneye, they talk about I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur, a relic of the Cold War, and she's like I have no compunction to send a man out to die. Then she goes come back alive, and by the third movie, the world is not enough. James Bond is saving her ass and doing all this stuff, and they let the hero be the hero he doesn't need to feel bad that he's a white dude that's the hero look folks there are many wait, 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 james bond is white what the fuck and what always be a man a white dude dark <laughs> hair i'm not sold on daniel craig's looks either but that's a topic no. for another day so do you guys have anything else you want to say about this me too bond before i move back to our listeners because uh, i feel like we've neglected them for long enough listen there's I... nothing there's nothing wrong yeah. with 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 trying to be um Topical, but again, movies are not where you fucking cut speeches. You know, nope. you know, and you brought up a good point with the AIDS thing. You brought up a good point with in, in Living Daylights, and the same thing with, 
you know, the Golden Eye. You know, other movies have social commentary as well, but they don't make that the crux of the entire fucking story. I love the Dark Knight, and one of the great little subplots or uh, uh, social commentary was, you know, uh, was surveillance. You know, and it's just a two second thing at the end of the movie. I don't want to be here if this thing is still here. Well, when it's done, fucking type in your name. That was it. At the end of the movie, types in his name and it's fucking destroyed. Like that. That's it. It, it wasn't this <laughs> long two and a half hour social commentary on why surveillance is wrong and people should be able to. Da, 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 da. You fuck around with that stuff, people don't go to your movies. This whole making the entire movie a social commentator commentary. They don't make money. Yeah, save, mm-hmm. save, save that shit for the award shows where everybody will watch you and they have the best ratings ever. Right. Yeah, James yeah. Bond movies don't need an Oscar. Yeah, we're not we're not giving you money to get your message or have you preach to us. We're giving you money to fucking entertain us. So dance, monkey. Yeah, you're you're meat puppets. Don't don't give us your fucking opinions. We don't want them. Yeah, you're not that smart. That's why I, you're meat puppets. <laughs> I think what right. I want to avoid more than anything too is watching James Bond be uh, the joke. Him be the butt of all the jokes. Uh, you know, we, we've suffered through the Roger Moore era. And yeah, um, rest in peace, Roger Moore. You seem like the greatest guy to play James Bond in terms of personality-wise. You were a UNICEF ambassador. It all kinds of great things. More power to you, you know, RIP. But as a Bond actor, my God, is watching those movies when we did the marathon, Yeah, I just can't wait to get through those because they're <laughs> they are hard to watch. <laughs> besides the fashion, besides the bad plots in some parts, uh, it's just, you know, Bond was turned into a parody of itself at times. And they get it right back on track. And you know, other things take over its place in terms of popularity. And, you know, since I guess I want to say Quantum of Solace, other things have taken over Bond in terms of popularity. And, you know, no James Bond movie since probably Goldeneye. Not, no, not even Goldeneye. Because I was going to say no Bond movie since Goldeneye has been the action flick of that era. But Heat came out in 95. And as much as I love Goldeneye and I prefer the film, I think Heat's, uh, you know, much more impactful. And 97, I don't know what action flick you had come out, so I can't think off the top of my head. 99, I guess you consider the Matrix action flick. Was that was 96. Oh, gotcha. I would, I would rather watch Tomorrow Never Dies over Independence Day 10 times. That oh, day. easily. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I like Independence Day a lot, but I like Tomorrow Never Dies a lot more. <laughs> Look, I, I just want to get off 007. I'm sorry. I, I, get, I can't get into that one because that's the one I hold near and dear to my heart. You Fucking know, depressing. It is depressing. You know, Marvel, this and that. But James Bond, it's always been like, it's popular when the movie comes out, and then it goes right back away. And, like, a, you know, I've always been into it. Games, a little bit of action figures that they release, all that shit. Dude, but, you, you buy you buy everything and anything with the with, with the with those three numbers on it all the time. So I will go, like, to the store, and I'll be like, oh, my God, a Hot Wheel. I bought, like, every Aston Martin they had. I, I, you know, I just do it. Yeah, it's only twelve bucks, but still, it's twelve Hot Wheels. Do I need twelve Aston Martin Hot Wheels? Yes, uh, yes, yes, you do. you do. I just want one real one, and then I'm done. That's all. I do. <laughs> uh, okay, so back to our listeners. Uh, thank you, Samuel Aragon. Captain Marvel was helping herself to green sausage. Ew. I wish. Can a scroll shape shift that too? Sure, I'd assume so. <laughs> TLJ Screwjob has a topical super chat. Favorite Bond quote plus best fight scene? Only heard one besides Bond, James Bond is for England, James? No, for me. So I'll go with that. That's I think that's one of my favorite quotes as well. Uh, I think mine is, I think he got the point. <laughs> that that I think that's my, oh my God, that might be my Yeah, favorite. yeah, that, that's my favorite one. For sure. You're a Thunderball aficionado. You know I, I love that I love shit out of that one. That's my favorite Bond one. Thunderball has some of the best action sequences of that decade and the best looking Bond women of any decade. Yes. Thunderball's got it going on. It's a little long on the underwater fight scene, but still gets a thumbs up from me. No more <laughs> foreplay. True. No more foreplay. That is a great line. Oh, yeah. To, to Famke, too, which is fine. Yeah, she is one of the best. Ugh. You know, I think one of my favorite Bond moments is very small, but it's in Tomorrow Never Dies when he's got Dr. Kaufman in the hotel room and he goes, or Dr. Kaufman goes, I'm just a professional doing a job. And James Bond goes, me too. And then shoots him in yep. the fucking face. Yeah. I, that's one of my favorite Brosnan moments because everyone wants, that wants to talk shit about him playing James Bond, that's one of the most brutal Bond. Like Brosnan has the highest kill count. There's a video that proves yep. it. That's not my opinion. There's a video that shows that. And he has some of the more brutal kills. I mean, he had Dalton uh, threw Benicio Del Toro into the cocaine grinder and burned up Robert Davi. But I mean, Brosnan did some equally dirty shit across every one of his movies. He... Uh, Took Elliot Carver and fed him into that grinder drill that was used to yeah yeah. Of yeah. Chips. yeah he fucking killed uh Renard with that fucking fuel rod he impaled him <laughs> oh shit yeah. yeah 
That's true. Dude, dude, one of the gnarliest kills was in Die Another Day when he dropped that uh, sh- chandelier on Rick Yoon. And he yeah. Threw, Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, and then he threw, um, what's his name? After threw him into a fucking turbine for the plane. Yeah, Gustav. That movie's terrible, by the way. But yeah, Gustav yeah. Graves. <laughs> Gustav Graves. Uh, yeah. So uh, now time you know, to just, face gravity. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn. Please don't say that. That movie is bad. It's bad, but you know it's really, <laughs> it's still a Bond movie, and it's like as much as you know it's bad, you're like fuck, I gotta watch it. Shit, <laughs> it I does don't. have a few, few, few redeeming qualities, but it's still a bad movie. The first half is pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. Once he gets to Iceland, yeah, no, it's, is he in Iceland or Greenland? Uh, it's Greenland, because okay. Iceland, Iceland is green like and Greenland is ice. All right, yeah, when he gets yeah. to Greenland, that is when for me the movie takes a shit in the bed. So. Yeah, Wait, I, you, I, you don't I mean, like CGI waves behind him while he's with a parachute. <laughs> that is the most embarrassing Bond moment next to the Sam Smith theme song ever. Oh God, oh, that's well, uh, well. I mean, bad. I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brosnan's probably you know probably goes Sean Connery and Brosnan for me. But I don't care how bad his movies are. I will still watch them. I don't care how bad they are. They're they're still at least fun to watch. You know, it's only oh, one yeah. bad Pierce Brosnan one though. Yeah, yeah. it's only one of them. It's not like fucking. You know, Roger Moore, where it was a 50 50 toss up, which if it was going to be good or bad. And even then, there's only two good Roger Moore ones. Um, I think there's, there's one great. And then, okay, he did what, seven of them? So mm-hmm. I'll say Live and Let Die is truly great. I absolutely yes. love this movie. Yeah, 100%. You know, the Golden Gun is shitty. Yeah. Why Who Love Me is good, but not as great as I think is uh, Live and Let Die is. Moonraker is shit. Mm-hmm. Fur is only as good. Octopussy is shit. A View to yeah. a Kill is pretty fun. Yeah. So it's every other one is decent. I'll give you that. Give not, you that. That's not necessarily the best track record out there, folks. I'm saying no. he's batting 500, boys. Uh, but to answer the second part of your question, TLJ Screwjob, best fight scene. I kind of want to say the fight scene between Trevelyan and Bond in the uh, antenna crater. That's brutal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's personal. Yeah, I'm trying to think about other Bond fights. I mean, I like when he fights that um, man dressed as a woman in Thunderball, and he snaps his neck with the fire poker. That's pretty awesome. Oh that shit! Is yeah. Funny. That is yeah. funny. That's he like funny. holds her over his knee and cracks his neck. It's well, the best is that you know they have an actual woman and then they swap him out right yeah. before he punches him in the face, which is still hilarious. But yeah, and then obviously the fight with Odd Job, just a big dude throwing James Bond around, is still pretty good. And then the, that's one of that's that to me that's one of the best because Bond has to use his brain. Well, not only that, but like they, the 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 tension of him knocking the head off the statue earlier in the movie, and you're like, fuck, don't let him get the hat, don't let him get the hat, like that, like that. That's the perfect fight scene in the franchise where the tension is really high. It's not just them brawling it out, but the tension's really good. Dude, speaking of tension, to build off your point, there's no music, and it's just the sound of that bomb ticking yes. down. And, that boom, 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 and you're yep. like, oh my god, when's it going to go off? And then they fucking stop it at 007 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool as fuck. <laughs> when, when, he, when he kills Yafet Koto with that fucking air thing. Oh, the shark like, board? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. That, that one-liner is so that stupid, makes me it fits laugh. it perfectly. Yeah. I, mean, it was, I knew he was full of hot air. <laughs> I always laugh at that. Um, well, and as much as the movie isn't great, even though I, I know it's bad, but it's I would like it for some reason. But the uh, the fight scene between him and that assassin and Quantum Asas is still pretty good. Oh, when the guy bleeds out in the hotel room, yeah, and they throw each other That's through the fucking cool. window. He Look stabs at, him in the leg and in the neck. I think you and I are both on the same page. We can dislike a movie, but there can be good moments in right, it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think everybody feels that way about a movie. Press one if you feel that way in the chat. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> look at I shit on. Well, I'm trying to think of it. Captain Marvel had a tribute to Stan Lee. That was awesome. Yes. Yeah. That was it. That was it. That was the only awesome. The one part. time she smiled was with Stan Lee. So I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll take her. a W. Bitch. Yeah. Uh, TLJ screw job. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the fight scene for Odd Job because I'm, I'm honestly in my mind running through every movie, every fight scene. Mm-hmm. And I can just skip the Roger Moore era because he doesn't fight. Yeah. No, no, he doesn't. He does the chop really well, though. Yeah. yeah. When my favorite is probably when he fights <laughs> the, the, the the judo chop. Yeah. <laughs> when when he fights Rom Common and stabs him, but leaves the 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 knife in as a common courtesy. That's wrong one. Part. Wrong franchise. Oh yeah, that was John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> talk, about director, talk about a director that should go do a Bond movie. Fuck. Yeah, definitely. Holy shit! Yeah. Uh, and then he, and he brings in Keanu Reeves to be a bad guy. Jesus, that'd be fucking awesome. Take my money now. <laughs> you would need a new James Bond, though, to play. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I wouldn't want Henry that. Henry Cavill's available. 
I would like Henry Cavill as Bond. I think you could actually, if you wanted to do, you don't need to reboot Bond. You could have a younger Bond come in. But what you should yeah. do is you should stack the uh, cast with a great Bond villain, like a really great one, and you get yourself a good Bond girl. And basically, you can help him be a strong James Bond, but also have an incredible cast. Because look at Brosnan. Brosnan, Pierce Brosnan's a fine actor. He's, you know, he's good. But I mean, you had Sean Bean, who's one of the best villains in Trevelyan. You mm-hmm. have Famke Jansen, who is a cool, kick-ass female yeah. villain. Yeah. Natalia's pretty good. Judy Dench is great. Samantha Alan Cumming, Penny, Penny. Dude, dude, Judy, Judy Dench was angry all the way through those movies, and she, and she, you know, I believed it. Yeah, <laughs> I will say that when she died at Skyfall, I applauded because I was fucking tired of her. Yeah, it was it was weird to carry on the new ones. I was like, you should just killed her off in the first one, had her like you know, like you know, retired down or something. Yeah, or just not had her at all. Yeah, or yeah, done that too. Anyway, I digress. Raiders of the Lost Flick says, who was cringier? The Eric Butt Star Wars video, reaction video, or Mundane Matt Silver Play Button video? Asking for a friend. <laughs> I'm going to say Mundane Matt because at least with the guy that cried over Star Wars, I can get that he's invested so heavily into it that it's like an emotional thing for him. Whereas Mundane Matt cried over a fucking form letter that they send to everybody. That's true. From from what Jeremy told me, that Star Wars dude, this Eric, what's his face, might be uh, on the spectrum. Yeah, so I'm not gonna make fun of some dude that's just you know whatever. But I've never seen his video. I've seen pictures of it. I have no interest in watching. I don't watch reaction videos. They're a waste of time. No. Yeah, I saw. I remember yeah, seeing the clip. It was it was pretty bad. It's it's just internet like, toilet dude, paper. They're not you know. Yeah, it's it's internet like, toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good, you know. But yeah, it was. Uh, I gotta yeah, I gotta go with the Star Wars thing. It was just. Like I remember showing the clip, and then it became a meme. So I mean, I was glad that that kind of happened. But I was like, "You don't need to be crying about this shit, dog. You know, just cool it over there." It wasn't honestly. It wasn't that great of a trailer. Uh, no, really it, wasn't. It, it had moments like, you know, let's get into this right now. Uh-oh. Eon, what was your favorite moment of that Star Wars trailer? Lando, for sure. Kendo, uh, the end of the trailer because <laughs> it was done. But uh, honorable mentions to the Lando part and Vincent Price laughing at the end. Nick, <laughs> none of it because it was all just like, please give us money for this movie. And they go fuck themselves. <laughs> There's that I'm, too. I'm sorry, but it's just like, hey, we have Lando in here. We should have been in the first movie, but we we forgot about him and get him in the closet. Now we're gonna bring him out and put him in this one. Please forgive us. Please give us your money. Go fuck yourself. Okay, go fuck yourself. Yeah, the only positive. I mean, not the only positive. The only thing that actually excited me was the Falcon getting its circular dish back, and that's it. So, uh, yeah, that trailer. I'll do a more in-depth analysis on my video for Star Wars coming up in, the, in this week. But, uh, yeah, there you go, folks, if you were wondering what we thought. Uh, Great Loner, I saw the leaked clips. I think your fears are true. Well, Great Loner, I saw a lot more of the leaks than I'm trying to let on for Avengers Endgame. I don't want to spoil it for any of you guys. I won't even let a hint slip. But uh, I've seen quite a bit by people that posted on Fandango, of all places. I'm like, fuck, man. Like I saw uh, one me- was a meme, and I won't say what's in the image, and it says, feeling cute might spoil Avengers Endgame. I don't know. And there were pictures from the movie, and I went, what the fuck? God. And I chuckled, and then I got pissed off because I thought it was fake at first. Yeah, I saw a spoiler today that pissed me off. It said half the people are dead at the beginning. God like, damn dude, it. Thanks. I promised the listeners we wouldn't spoil the film, asshole. I know, but that one, it, it's like, really? Really? Half of them are all gone at the beginning of the movie. God damn it. Avenge the Fall and Titus O'Neil. <laughs> you love that so much. You it listen when it happened. That's one reason I would wish of all the shitty pay per views to watch. I want to be together for that one because I literally could not stop and stop could not stop laughing for like thirty minutes. It was well, there will be a every time I Saudi see, mania. every time I see that clip too. It's just, God damn it is so funny. And now you they made a meme with him falling, avenge the fall next to it. God damn it, that's perfect. Ah, uh, yeah. Titus World Slot. Let's see. Speaking of Titus, Titus Moeller sends in our next super chat. Uh-huh. Have they already sacrificed AE being lazy or being amazing? Uh, that means Avengers Endgame that I just figured out. Sorry. I'm, I'm a little late to my own party. Uh, I, I can't. Like I said, I did not like Captain Marvel. I do not like Brie Larson's attitude. I'm not going to just go in to be a negative Nancy on Avengers Endgame. I have seen some things. I'll be completely honest. If the movie blows me away, I'll be the first one to tell you. I've never lied about these movies to you. But if, if I'm not feeling it, and it, and remember, like we said with Captain Marvel, we judged the movie outside of all the Brie Larson stuff. We judged it as the film, as like as if none of that other shit happened. And I'm sorry there's hillbillies driving their trucks down my street. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, uh, Titus. I don't know if they sacrificed it, but I don't know, man. I know it's going to make big bucks. I think it'll be the biggest movie ever made if it doesn't suck. If it's if it's as good as and or excuse me, if it's as good as Infinity War, this movie will be the biggest movie of all time. And Infinity War. Well, I mean, like, well, he, also here's the thing: it actually broke the internet when they when they put pre sale tickets out. Not yeah. not not like what not like when they said you know oh um, pre sale tickets for like Black Panther and uh, Captain Marvel like you know oh we're crazy you know these were actually crazy because they broke the goddamn internet. Yeah, that's how you can tell if something's popular, if you can't get it. All these fucking stupid websites like Forbes and Rotten Tomatoes bullshit reporting, oh, Captain Marvel's breaking records. Yet you go across the country and people are like, this theater wasn't even full. Like, you know, this movie, every website for ticketing, nope, not available. You're queuing up for two hours, like, to get a movie ticket. It's just a yeah, common thing. Exactly. Dion, you bought definitely. your ticket weeks in advance. Yeah, because before going to fucking WrestleMania, I was like, dude, I better... You know, talking to the manager, they were kind of cool with it. Our little bistro theater. He's like, "Yeah, they're going fast, dude." So I had to, I bought it that fucking night, man. It was, goddamn, there was nowhere near that for Mar Captain Marvel. I mean, you know, like they already said it. I I can confirm. You know, I'm living in a semi-small little city town thing. Even then, the theater was not fucking full. No one had any problem getting goddamn tickets. And again, there were no lines to Captain Marvel, and, and that I, has happened I, with I, every other I, one. I keep hearing that all the time from people, not just on the YouTube channel, but in person. People that don't even watch our shit. I've heard that from like family members and stuff. Yep. I'm just yep. saying, like, it's a common thing you keep hearing. I mean, it'll be interesting to know. Like I said, we're not putting any theories out there now. We're just going to follow the numbers when they come out. And if the numbers add up, boom, it's over and done with. But until then, I'm still not convinced. All I got to do is see proof because I do not believe the fuckery that is going on with that movie. There was a reason why it was protected the way it was. Uh, let's see. Grand Inquisitor says, I'll get assload coffee, uh, black rifle coffee. I do need to get your goddamn. Uh, I need to return that. I'm so sorry. You give me a birthday. Yeah. It's, been, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been a rough couple of weeks for him. Yeah. It has yeah. been, this year has gone by like you would not believe. Oh, dude, I was filling out some paperwork earlier today and I had to put 418 down. I'm like, Jesus, when the hell did it become middle of April? Yeah. <laughs> it's like hot outside and I'm pissed off. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa don't 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 say that to the to the to the old guys they'll they'll bring snow back just cool it just fucking cool they can it. bring snow back i don't care. no don't <laughs> shut I up for dude. winter anyway yeah. <laughs> he lives in michigan if it snows he's, he's done for the week yeah dude it's, <laughs> it snowed on us four days ago yeah dude, I was okay yeah and then, and then and then and then when we left it was hot outside <laughs> don't yeah. let the old gods hear you say that shit it, look fucking it. cool it Snow gives us gives us an excuse to be lazy, okay? So uh, hey, there, we were not point. lazy. We did an entire show that you day. Put a hell of a show on. It was no, the first that. time in the history of the channel where we were one, all four together in the same room. Two, and it was on video. Yeah, it's a good show. I'm proud. And we ate some delicious pizza. Yeah, Luminati's for anyone wondering. Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, Logan Michael anti Funko Pop says, "This is my username for three months." Why? Oh, the, oh, the, the, that reminds me, I, I need to post a picture. <laughs> Uh oh, of <laughs> of of you. Oh, and the Funko Pop posted. Yeah. <laughs> what? Posted after the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Re Rivantari says, "Let the hot dog die. Make sausage if you have to." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both are tasty options. Yes. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Grand Inquisitor says, "Dion would bang Mama June from Honey Boo Boo." <laughs> That's. Not a lot. Easy, easy, easy now. Don't be, don't be, you know, start rumors about my character. I said, I, I like him fluffy, not completely covered in a tub of lard. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he has some sense. All right. We, we, we found the ceiling, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Is the floor? I don't know. Well, you know, the, 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 oh. the <laughs> she lost a lot of weight. He might, yeah, it that too. means nothing. Yeah, still though. Have, 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 have you seen her her derpy face? Come on now. Have you seen? Oh, yeah, it looks like her brother uncle was the same person. Oh God. Oof. Oof. No. Oh. Forty nine. Thank you very much. Dion needs a chastity belt and muzzle. LOL. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I wouldn't go <laughs> that far. We, we little... start rolling Dion up to conventions like he's fucking uh, Hannibal and Lecter like... in Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Holy shit! We get it. We get. We get a truck and everything. Yeah, we can. We can make that happen. I've got a fucking. We can get some clear gla glass and whatever. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. That's good. That's Dion good. just has to sit there every time somebody walks me. He's got to be like, 
Be like, hey, don't stand Every time a white woman walks past me, doesn't it? DMX? I mean, you know. Think this is a game? Yeah, he'd be like, do you think this is a game? Oh, fuck. Mm, I can smell you from here. Chassis belt and a fucking muzzle. That is good. That's a good one. <laughs> Let's see. Cesaro Japan says, did you see the Daily Mail, art- Daily Mail article where a TV writer was helming the script duties for the next James Bond movie to bring him into the hashtag Me Too era? Yes, that Cesaro Japan. We about, just yeah. cover that. Um, I don't even want to think about that. Thank you very much for the bad memories. Uh, remember, she's only being hired to punch up the script, per se. But... Uh, Oh, she's well, gonna punch that script all right, right in the dick. Yeah, and, and and even then, her whatever she's changing, or whatever can has to be approved, and then you know, probably be- not approved. They'll just let her go there because ho- people in Hollywood are fucking idiots. Yeah, right? I'm, I mean, well, I, well, everybody's feelings, but they're the p- biggest pieces of shit in the world. No, hundred, no, man, that, that no, that's exactly how it is. Because yeah, I've I've, I've said that for for forever. They can act like you know, oh, me too, movement, this, that, and the other, but you're the motherfuckers who started that shit. The you guys are the closed, reason why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're the ones who closed the gate for um, every sort of minority to be part of the the film industry and be and be you know represented. They're the ones who stopped that shit. Now you know now that this has all come to light, they want to be like, oh no, we're we're, we're better people now. Like what? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna flip over and all of a sudden you're better people now. And because you've done it for eighteen months or two years, you're it's, we should take your word for it. Go fuck yourself. Okay. That's why it comes off as disingenuous, man, because they sure shit didn't have another, any problem with it when what? The f- checks fucking cleared. Oh, exactly. Yeah. From Nick, I just want to put that out there. Do what now? That was a moment of wisdom from you. I just that was. That was awesome. Yeah. That, that, was a, that was a great line by you. Those oh, are few you. and far between, folks. That's a collector's item. <laughs> Barreling down full speed. That's yeah, right. every, every now and again, my, my, my brain cells will fire, fire together enough to, to come up with a thought so you know what happens. Are you still drunk, any of you? Because I might still be. No, drunk. I'm not. I, I have the giant cooler of, of liquor I'm going to take with me to Atlanta um, and give it to uh, give it to my friends down there. <laughs> oh, you're going to party tomorrow night. I forgot. That's yeah. true. I am. Well, I have, I, have, I have an interview to do on the Rated R, Rated R Horror Commentary podcast. Oh, our buddy Josh? Yep. Yep. I'm doing something with him tomorrow night, and then I'm going to party. So. Yeah, you're not going to make it back. <laughs> it was nice doing the big rig. Yeah. <laughs> if you die i'll take your uh dragon con pass and yep <laughs> you're yeah, that, that's fine with me that's fine with me i doubt anybody's gonna give you shit when you come be like i'm you know i'm this person they're not gonna give you shit at all yeah hope not i'll ready. just go with you and when they're like are you really nick you tam be like yeah he is oh okay come on in <laughs> <laughs> and this is um you know it's like a corbin dallas thing corbin yeah. <laughs> so you're saying ken does lilo dallas yeah, multi-pass. <laughs> plus, help me, plus. I <laughs> want to get this into the convention and call me where the hell you want. Yeah, I watched that yesterday. You know, I've seen that movie about 10 times. I still couldn't describe the story to you. Dude, I love that movie. <laughs> Ever since I watched it the first time. The first time I watched it, I think it was in... Yeah, I, 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 God, I, I've loved the movie all the time, man. I have the special edition Blu-ray of it. I fucking love it. Dion, I'm glad you actually understood what I just said. It was hilarious. I, I seriously, I watched it yesterday when I was working on the page. I'm like, what the fuck is the story of this movie? Like, I get what's like, there's some kind of stones, there's like a nuke thing going on, there's <laughs> shooting guns. And then it has, look, I like the movie, so I'm not taking a shit off, but it has right, the, right. the most abrupt ending ever. It does. It, like, he's making out there in that blue tube, and then it just goes to credits. I'm like, okay. Tell her you love her. Tell her you love her. Tell her you her love. <laughs> Oh man, I fucking love that movie. Wasn't that movie sadly a flop? It was. It was, but it it, it became a cult classic like really quickly. <laughs> I think it barely made his money back too, like yeah, just I'm barely. Sure. No. Uh, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. The Fifth Element? Yeah, I've never watched it. It's on, uh, really? Yeah, I haven't seen it. It's a great movie. It's on Netflix. You should give it a shot. I I recommend it highly. I do enjoy it. I just I don't know. I just. Fucking D Lo from Friday is president of the universe or whatever. And oh, Chris God. Drake, a. Smokey from Friday is Ruby Rob, the most annoying movie character ever. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Here, here, here are the number. Well, here are the numbers for it. I, I don't know what the budget was because I won't say it right now. But apparently the domestic was 63.8 million. The foreign was 200.1 million. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, it probably did okay then. It budget because it, it made its money back because the budget was quoted at $90 million on uh, Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah, fine, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's just like, that, man, people in America didn't give two shits, but people all over the world fucking loved it. Yeah. yeah I, I will say this. 
looking back at the fifth element reminds me how far we've come from like blockbuster movies in a good way. Right. Because like I remember the hype for a lot of these movies and then they kind of sucked. I'm not saying the fifth element sucked, but like Godzilla sucked, okay? Godzilla. Really- yeah, well, yeah, there was like it's it like, you can kind of tell these days because they put too much hype into it. Same thing with like Green Lantern. They put too much hype into it, and you were just like, no, this is gonna be a flop. You can just kind of feel it. Well, it an embarrassment. Well, Green Green Lantern was a, was a little different because they were just like, it, it 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 wasn't a part of that that uh, ether of like you had the movie, then you had the song, then you had the video game, then you had the da 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 like all this other shit. Like, I remember, quiet. huh? I'm, I'm sorry. Quiet. I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm 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 sorry, but when but when like for Green Lantern, their their promotion is Subway's got avocado on their sandwiches. You need to just stop. You know, Dion. It's I'm glad you brought up the song element because I do miss from the blockbusters. Like the first Avengers did this, minus the video game. But remember, like Spider Man had the song and the yeah. video game and the toy line and the album and the yeah. comic book. I miss that shit. Can we bring that back? That well, it, that it was happened, it happened for the first two Men in Black movies with Will Smith. <laughs> Well, you know, the the, the the first Men in Black song is great. The second one, I Thank don't you. want to nod in my head to that shit. But, <laughs> but, um, but I remember like the, la- the last time they really did that was I think for Thor. Thor had a tie-in video game for PS3 that was fucking terrible. Like Thor and then, I don't know, Clash of the Titans did it too. But that was kind of yeah. like the last time where you had like yeah. a tie-in video game and you had like a t- you know, tie-in other shit for it. It was just, it was... I miss that too, man. Like I miss having, you know, because some of those games ended up being really fucking good. Are you good. seriously talking shit about the Thor video game? The man who wanted to stay in so he could play Iron Man two. All I'm saying is the <laughs> Thor one was bad. That's all I'm saying. I'm, it was Iron dark. Man two wasn't oh, terrible. They all sucked ass. The first was Iron it? Man the, game the, was the, pretty the, good. The, the Fury Captain Road, Marvel. the Fury Road video game was awesome. Yes, Fury Road was dope, but that yeah. technically wasn't a tie-in. That was like a, it was like separate, but not really. Like they used characters, but it was a t- like that was a weird thing that happened. But that one turned out amazing oh yeah what would you guys say is the best video game tie-in i'm gonna go with gold Ooh, oh, I, 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 I can't beat that i can't beat that i cannot beat that i'm sorry I spider-man sorry. 2 yeah spider-man yeah, 2 i can't awesome. beat gold i can't spider-man 2 spider-man you're there, you're there super mario brothers <laughs> easy easy <laughs> <laughs> look i will give you spider-man 2 is a very good game but that game has been topped by Spider-Man PS4. In many regards, there's never been a better James Bond game than Goldeneye. I agree, but that the introduction of the open world thing was just fucking crazy. The introduction to four-player, multiplayer, uh, split screen on Game not GameCube on us, Nintendo 64. Yeah, they get this council right, bro. Yeah, well, I didn't. I just said game. I didn't say game. <laughs> he I'm was working games. on it. He was working yeah, on I it. I like the games. Fine, it's the Okama Game Sphere, bitch. All right. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. The tally. No, uh, I think Goldeneye was more groundbreaking. I like Spider-Man too. Shit, I played as I much Spider-Man two as I played Goldeneye. I just, you know, I want to go back to play Goldeneye. I never want to go back to play Spider-Man two. Yeah. But uh, God, we're planning for the, some of the most shitty, soulless cash grabs of the '90s, just because we were kids and it was kind of cool. I got an idea. Oh, Hell yeah, man! Batman so, at, at uh, Taco Bell was dope. So we're 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 gonna do horror hound, right? Oh uh, yeah, I gotta buy those passes still. So I'm thinking we also should probably just get a Nintendo 64, four controllers, and golden eyes. So when we're not at the convention, we can entertain ourselves. Ooh, yeah. we're well, all yeah, gonna table with yep. electricity, and we'll play it and invite fans over to come play Golden Eye with us. That's right. I mean, we could. Yeah, I can. I, I can bring a small TV. We can make this happen. Shoot your ass up with Duchess. Our buddy uh, E Temple Queen sent me an extra Nintendo sixty four, so we can. Really oh, make oh, it. oh, so it looks like we got to get some controllers. Dibs on the Atomic Purple. Uh, I have an Atomic Purple one. I don't know if you'll get dibs on it because it's the only one with a working thumbstick. <laughs> As I say, I do have an Atomic Purple one still from like twenty years ago. It does not have a working thumbstick. It, it you, if you look at it, you can see where it tapers down into the controller from how much I've used it. Oh God! Well, You've rubbed it raw. Yeah. <laughs> For as much as I played Goldeneye, I played almost as much WWF No Mercy, which didn't really use the thumbstick except to taunt or do yeah. your finisher. So it was yeah. mostly a D pad game. Yeah. No, I uh, like the like the inside of the uh, little joystick part on mine is like gray on the inside of it. Mm, you didn't From... take care of your shit. No, I just played the shit out of it. I know. Well, that's what th- I remember when I first got the GameCube, I was real ginger with the ginger with the controller. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to fuck up this thumbstick. And then it's like, what was that 15 years later? Well, no, 18 years later, it's still like new. That's a damn good system. Yeah. Uh, 
Let's see. Nicholas Glenn says, my first Star Wars celebration ever and love it despite the state of Star Wars. Well, Nicholas Glenn, you had a hell of a time with us. And I saw your photos that you posted from the upper level. I guess it was the snack bar, which we never went to. We decided we were going to go out to lunch and just drink. So, Well, yeah. well, well, he, well here's the thing. Like, going to the snack bar, I'm not going to pay $18 for a slice of pizza. Nope. Um, we always went to a local place and we had a good fucking time. So yeah, we paid $18. We that. got a, a burger meal and three beers. Yeah, sure we did. Yeah, and in no way am I mad about having to like, like you know walk down the road to go to a nice a nicer restaurant. It was great. It's just nice being home though. It's like, well, if I want to get lunch, <laughs> yeah. I'll drive there and it'll take five minutes. Yeah, I woke up in my own bed. I'm like, ah, rooming with Nick was fun, but god damn, this feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> Your room smelled like beef jerky. <laughs> I don't know why, because I don't think we ever had any beef jerky. No, our, never our, had any beef jerky. Our room smelled like soy sauce. Soy sauce and pizza. Yeah. And then Which, we never got Chinese until yeah, Saturday. And then Leipz and Joel's room smelled like bleach. And Ben Gay. And Ben Gay. Yeah. <laughs> I see hot. Oh god. Hey bro, can you get my delts? I'm feeling a little tight up there. <laughs> I wonder why I really Let me just finish checking off my pants. <laughs> I don't know why our room would have smelled like beef jerky. I know every time I opened the refrigerator, I get a beer, it smelled like pizza because we had that Giordano's in there from Wednesday night all the way until we left. <laughs> yeah, we never <laughs> for, for like a week. For like a week, it was probably still good too. I yeah. wouldn't know after after about like three days. I'm like, nah, man. Especially the one we got from L Luminati's was way the fuck better. Yeah, yeah so. well, that, we, that we also. Yeah, I was gonna say there, there was only two pieces left that sat on the table all day, and you ate one, and then Jeff ate one the next morning, and it was fine. <laughs> Yeah, I laid yeah, in bed, I drank a cup of coffee and ate a slice of pizza and watched like that gold digger show. Yeah, oh, nice. I was gonna say, you both are, you still have your vision. You haven't died, so clearly the pizza was still good. Oh, you, know, you got a day on that. Dion is the king of leaving food out and eating it. Oh, yeah, dude. You get a pizza for dinner. You just, everyone's like, oh, you put it in the refrigerator, cold pizza. It's like, dude, you just leave it sit on the fucking stove overnight and it's fine. <sighs> yep. So we have our friend break all day that says do it and i will drive back to houston from la i think he means in regards to good morning pop culture tomorrow let's see where we're at in terms of thumbs up ah we're not even halfway there we're only yeah we're not 83 womp, womp. i know right it's not looking like it's gonna happen folks sorry so sorry Darth, Darth promise goes pizza time <laughs> i love that meme <laughs> I'm one of those people, if you make a good meme out of something I love, I'm going to give you credit for it. So, you know, meme Star Wars. Meme. There's. there's I was going to say, say there's that. And I don't I can speak for all of us here when I can say we're always ready for pizza time. I know. Even now I could go for a slice, one slice of Luminati. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you if you if there was like a knock on my door right now, they're like, we got a pizza delivery here. Be like, I didn't order any pizza. Be like, it's paid for. Oh, then I did. I forgot. I, I'm retarded. Thank you. <laughs> I, oh God! And I will eat a couple pieces of that pizza. Uh, Obi Wan two seven eight eight three has an interesting point. Big difference between Charlize and Brie. Charlize can act and is much better looking, and hasn't recently insulted her fans or critics loudly and often. Very, very true. I yeah, she is. I I like her as an actress. She's really good. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't talk too much shit, so that's all good. Plus, Charlize Theron is an African American. Brie Larson <laughs> panders to them. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you're right. Technically, you're right. Yeah, I got the technic <laughs> technically, technically, she is. <laughs> it's truth. It is. It is. Double uh, Seven Cloud says, "I respect Daisy now with acknowledging two genders and not being a C dash NT and disavowing the Raylo cult." Oh, he almost busted out that. See you next Tuesday. I know, right? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm down with Daisy Ridley after this week. Seeing the old clip of her saying, it's just so funny how the lead of your new Star Wars movie shoots down all the bullshit that the uh, media builds up, and then the media will remain silent about it. It's like, oh, yeah. uh, what do we do? Well, she it's because she's a woman and she's white and she's in a Star Wars movie. They can't really say too much. Yeah. Razy Diddley has done a lot to, like, you know, build her image up. I mean, yeah. Ray's a terrible character, but you gotta blame the fucking writing for that one. No, I, you know, no, and and I do, I, I do not blame, yeah, because she's she's never been crazy or gone off the rails or said some dumb stuff like she's yet, just, yeah, yet. But at least no. But here's the thing: yet is good because that's what's happening. Like, she knows she's still up and coming. She knows that she's like still in the infancy of her her, her career. In order, she want to be pegged as like. You know, um, Ray from <laughs> shut, shut up, up. Ben, help. Shut up. I can't help it. 
<laughs> she wants to be pegged, but in a different way. Um, she doesn't want to be, you know, put in that put in that role of just like, oh, I'm I'm the I'm the girl from Star Wars. She wants to do more stuff later on, I'm sure, and you know, be something else. So just be a good actress. So. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, I'm with you, 007 Cloud. Dr. Coffinale says, you guys seen Nathan Butler's vid on why he's ending Star Wars? Or excuse me. Or he, yeah, I guess he meant to say Star Wars timeline gold updates. Hilarious slash heartbreaking. I am not familiar with that. I do not even know what that is, actually, Dr. Coffinale. I'll have to look that up because I would uh, like to have a frame of reference for, you know, your super chat. But I'm sorry, Dr. Coffinale. I will look into that. Uh, Alpha Terra Nima says, I thought L337 was supposed to be the best navigator in the galaxy. Why is she crashing this franchise like she's Bane? <laughs> <laughs> I guess she was born in the darkness. Yeah, I was born in it, molded by it. <laughs> by the way, uh, Alpha Terra Nima, that clap is for you. That was the fucking perfect super chat right there. <laughs> god. Oh my god. Uh, Cesaria Japan says, so in other words, it's exactly what we're told wouldn't happen. Hashtag Me Too being used to restrict men from consensual sex, even fictional men like James Bond. Yeah, oh, we're all going to have to carry around those contracts now. I know, right? Carry around <laughs> contracts and breathalyzers. Chappelle yeah. Show knew better than anyone else. They warned us. Yes, they did. Yeah. He's like a modern day prophet, that David Chappelle. Yeah, well, he's Rick James, bitch. That's right. <laughs> Fuck your couch. <laughs> Uh, Demogenize, <laughs> what do y'all think of the Star Wars game issue? Do you guys know what the issue he's talking about, or do you want me to elaborate? <coughs> no, elaborate. Don't don't know the, yeah. People are bitching that there's a white guy as the lead in the Star Wars. Oh, like, oh yeah, I go. saw that earlier today. And I'm like, come on, get well, over it. For um, every asshole out there that wants to bitch on Twitter, I would like to direct you towards Star Wars Battlefront 2, where you had some useless woman TIE fighter pilot. There you go. You got your female lead in the Star Wars game. You just didn't play the fucker. So don't bitch. No, no, no. Hey, exactly. Hey. And and no okay. nobody bought it because nobody bought it because EA fucked up the what is it, the microtransactions or something? Yep. Like, yeah, it was, it was pay to win. Dude, I, I, I bought the game at a deep discount of like fourteen dollars off of the PS off of the PS store. It would um have I to be bit, free for me to play it. Huh? It would have to be free for me to play it. Well, give yeah. it give it give it like till sometime this year. I'm sure they'll have it as like a free download for one of the months. I'm sure they will. Ah, just wait till you get to the new game because the new game looks like it could actually be good. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, it's, dude. It's single player, so you don't have to worry about all that crap. Yeah, God. No DLC, no nothing. Yep. Well, they said no microtransactions. They didn't say no DLC. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm for, sure for, be, yeah, for it to be a single player game, game for it to be a single player game, there probably will be DLC. Like there'll be other campaigns you can buy and you know get on and things if, like that. So. If they were smart, what they would. But well, they're do not. Is, so what are you? What are you worried about? <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just saying what they would do is so it's a single player. You're a Jedi. You know, fighting between. I think it, it's set between like what three and four. Yeah. Well, they're not three and four anymore. Remember, they lost the episode title. Oh so fuck off! Now, police say Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. So, as I was saying, they were set between three and four. So, <laughs> the best thing they could do is if they 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 could have that. If they want to add a DLC to it, you could create the DLC for to, for it. But instead, you get to be like Vader or a Sith, and you're hunting down the Jedi. So, like, the opening yeah. to uh, Star Wars Unleashed? Yeah, cool? I mean, I will Dude. throw a bag of money at that, and I will play it with a rager the entire time, just hunting Jedi down as Vader. <laughs> that would be actually I mean, fun. They treat it like a... Uh, remember Horde Mode in Gears of War? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, that would be fun. go through waves and waves. Like, you just go through waves of, like, soldiers and then a Jedi at the end of each wave. Yeah, I mean, um, you wouldn't see me for weeks if that came out. because I, I would see you for weeks. Yeah, but I just say we don't see you for weeks. <laughs> Well, true, but if we if we did see each other regularly, you wouldn't see because I would just be like, I ain't gonna do shit except sit here on this couch and just run through everybody as Vader. I mean, I'll just I would go to planets and just hack people to death and just ice entire populations as Vader. It would goddamn that is my dream. <laughs> One day, Kendo. One day. <laughs> That's my dream in life is to be Darth Vader and just be able to kill an entire planet with a lightsaber in one go. <laughs> Uh, up next is Ivan Nieves who says I work for an armored car company I can try to make that happen let's transport Mr. Green in style Longtime fan from the New Jersey security dude holy we, shit we remember you man we remember you you were one of the first uh, listeners that was a constant on our early early live streams over a year guys that'd be that'd be awesome we get our own, we get our own security security van we just put our sticker on a regular like Brinks truck <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put it on a lot of things over the weekend. 
We did mainly bathrooms. Yeah, yes. I mean, I mean, you you really don't want to walk up to a Brinks truck and put something on it because they will probably shoot you. Yeah, they will not be set to stun. <laughs> That's true. The Princess Leia, your ass. God. <laughs> uh, Leo Breaker forty nine says Wolverine Origins is my pick for best tie in. That's a yeah. damn good video game. That's That's a good game. Video game. That was bloody as shit too, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that was crazy, like, man. Paper. Dude, blood dripping off and shit. It was nuts. And I think you could actually heal yourself, like, you know, Wolverine style. Well, I mean, Wolverine can't heal himself, so I would think so. Most video games don't incorporate that factor. Have you ever played yeah, but they should. Up the health packs and shit? Yeah, I mean, it's like having God mode on the entire time, but, I mean, you're Wolverine, so it makes sense. Yeah. So uh, there's one other thing I want to talk about real quick before we uh, get into the final closing of the show so have you guys ever heard of a garbage tier video game website called kotaku oh yeah oh uh, yeah i know about it yeah or pork rinds pigs pussies <laughs> so have you heard the stupidity of kotaku recently uh, i try to I avoid mean, you them have to be a little more specific than the stupidity of kotaku that's a very large okay. umbrella so uh they posted on their twitter and on their website smash brothers ultimate persona 5 dlc appears to contain a disability slur what now hold on i'm reading this from twitter uh we have contacted all party or excuse me contacted all parties involved for comment if an official comment shows this is incorrect i will of course issue a retraction and an apology uh updated added to the story should hopefully be live soon a lot of Persona fans are insult or insisting the lyrics are retort it or retardendo, a musical term. We've listened again and again and still don't quite hear it that way, but we thought we'd update it to allow that to be seen. And anyway, my point I'm trying to make is they are writing articles saying that there's disability slurs when these dumb fuckers can't even interpret a music lyric properly. So they refuse to go back and retract it. And to me, this is like the epitome of of everything wrong with websites today. They want to get on these social platforms, but then they cause these problems that aren't real problems. So I stopped personally reading Kotaku years ago, but I find it hilarious that they're going out of their way to write articles about how insensitive Nintendo is and uh, Persona and all this shit, but in reality, they're just fucking stupid. That sounds like they've got some fucking disabilities. And they refuse to delete the article. They're just putting footnotes on so they can get traffic and clicks. Folks, avoid Kotaku like the plague. They offer nothing. And when they review a video yeah, game, they don't even give it a score. Not even that you need a score to make it a worthwhile review, but the reviews are based on like intention, not actually outcome of a game. So it's like, well, this game's very good, but it doesn't have a female lead. So you know what? That's the kind of scoring Kotaku is. I mean, oh, God. A card from the High Council. It's like an SJW Central website. Just stay the fuck away. Anything from Gizmodo, io9, you don't need to go there. It is the um, crazy cat lady of video game websites. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, Kotaku, more like shit Taku. Yeah, well, they're they're a bunch of fucking clown shoes. Okay, that's right. I just can't I can't stand Kotaku and all the stuff that goes on with uh, you know gaming media. Just play the game, have fun, and shut up. Well, this is this is exactly why, why I hate E3 because it's always just, it's always the same bullshit, man. Same well, bullshit. I want to reiterate too: the people that write these things that reach those people, they don't represent the people that buy this shit. Yeah, they no. barely even play the fucking games themselves because they're broke dick assholes that don't have anything better to do. It's like, well, I went to college for philosophy and I don't know earth science of. <laughs> pygmies or some dumb shit like that and they can't get a job so they sit bitch in a video game website and they're just they're unqualified to do anything they don't add anything to society they don't entertain they don't inform they don't do anything and i know that sounds harsh to say about these people but i feel like i'm being nice right now because it seems small but they've been doing this for years this is the same corporation that got sued by hulk hogan and lost for leaking a sex tape because they thought it was their moral uh right to release it like these are the type of people they just need to shut up and go away forever. No one needs you. I agree. No one needs your website. Now, our final piece of news, it's video game related, but did you guys see the PS5 information? I did. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with you, Kendo. Are you excited? Uh, mildly. Dion? Uh, I mean, I am. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get, because they, they said it might be 2020 release, <clears> but I'm hoping we get a couple more years out of the PS4. I love the PS4. I really do think it's a great system. And but Dion, it's fully backwards compatible. Who cares? I know, but still, man, I'm not gonna. I don't want to spend another 500 bucks. You know, but you will. Uh, 
That's not the point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the point. That's not the point. I just don't want to. I want to get some more years out of the PS4. But no, I am excited about it for sure. I, I'm definitely like I, you know, I want to. I want to see that system with you know 4K and all, and you know, and all this shit. I'm ready, man. Nick. I mean, I'm I'm down with it. I understand it, but like once again, I'm really I'm really happy with my PS4. It's gonna and I'm I'm not really into the backwards compatibility thing because there's not a lot of games, not a lot of old games, want to play. It's only PS4 to PS5. Yeah, so I was gonna say yeah, that's only, the only ba- that's why I'm only mildly because it's just backwards. Yeah, four I mean, and and honestly, like I'm I'm yeah, I'm fine on my PS4. I love it. <clears throat> Probably gonna. <clears throat> Get a hard drive for it here soon, so I can um, put more games on it. And that's that's it, honestly. I mean, I've played the VR stuff; I love it. I have no problems with it. It's a great system. Uh, I'm ready to move on. I rarely say this, but PS4 is great. I've had it since day one. I've liked it. I've owned more games for this than any other PlayStation console, mainly because of the cheap PlayStation uh, DLC, not the DLC, the PlayStation Plus games that are free, and then all the sales they have. I I have a big library of games, but at the same time. We're just getting remasters and remakes still, and if we're have if we have to wait for the next generation to get a new Grand Theft Auto and all that, so be it. But I think a, a six year, soon to be seven year lifespan on the PS3 is or PS4 is fine. I mean, let's see, the PS1 was ninety five to two thousand. This is U.S. time. Then two thousand to two thousand six for PS2. PS3 was 06 to 2013, and then 2013 to soon to be 2020. I think that's a nice, healthy life cycle. We've had a lot of great games, especially Spider-Man. And I'm only hoping that all of my downloaded games will transfer over right away without any hassle, because I'll still play Spider-Man in the uh, next generation. That's something that excites me. But I I found it interesting that Wired Magazine had an article that just laid everything out so quickly. It's not like we had to deal with leaks and all this other bullshit like we do with Avengers and Star Wars and all this other garbage. It's just like, hey, this is everything to this point that we're going to tell you, and it's more than just a name and this and that. Hell, they didn't even give the name. So I thought they handled it incredibly well. Yeah, that's fair. So, so 2020 might be the year. We'll uh, we'll get PS5s and we'll have... We should, do, we should eventually do an official World Class Bullshitters PSN account. So Ooh. we can our listeners and do all that shit. We'll make that available. Maybe we'll do that for patrons. Who knows? Yeah. So over on Patreon tonight, folks, we're going to be talking about a little of the uh, spicier things from the convention, but we're actually going to do a little more Avengers ranking. Kenda, you got that list available? Uh, Yeah, it's right here on my computer. Cool. Well, get that pulled up, my friend, because uh, we're going to be doing a little more countdown related stuff to Endgame. Oh, you- shit. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And the car ride from hell. And the car ride from hell, <laughs> aka the live stream of Andy almost falling out on his ass. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Mazamonti, thank you very much. Uh, what do y'all think of the Bond, the plot for tw- Bond Twenty Five? Excuse me. Uh, I don't know the plot, or I haven't read any leaks. Have you guys? Nope. No, no I haven't read anything. Once, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I read. I read the headline of the thing we, we talked about earlier, and I was just like, yeah, I don't care. I've heard that it might be a slight remake of Honor Majesty's Secret Service, which would piss me off. Oh, I, no. what? God damn it. Don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, don't do that. That's a great fucking movie. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Which, which would spawn a great documentary, which everybody yes. should go fucking watch. You fucking love that, dude. I love that you love it. <laughs> I don't know, but honestly, just the man, the man's life story in itself is just in just fucking impressive because like, you know, he had a disease that was supposed to kill him like in two years and he's lived a long, healthy life. He goes and he goes through, he goes through like the 60s and 70s, you know, and becomes a male model and does all kinds of awesome, crazy bullshit in those times, especially in, you know, in Australia in Australia and uh, the UK and has a good fucking time. And, he, and there's reenactments of everything. <laughs> You know, I it was just, it's a great documentary. It is a really wonderful, well done documentary. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna watch it again because I have it. So I really yeah. <laughs> uh, Leo Breaker forty nine final super chat of the evening. Persona fan slash owner of the DLC, they can get bent, and they means Kotaku. I feel Kotaku should get bent. Uh, I don't normally uh, get so militant with a website, but honestly, Kotaku offers nothing to the pop culture landscape. Yeah, I mean, you know, the only if you don't want to don't want them to do anything, just block all their stuff and don't go to the website because then they can't, you know, farm clicks then. That's all it is. So, well guys, we did not do it. There will not be a good morning pop culture tomorrow. So, we got 500 uh, Yeah, now. we're we're just we're just halfway there just now. So, and, and the show is over. So, folks, yeah. 
Thank you for watching World Class Bullshitters. This is episode 169. Next week. Yeah, we'll 69. All right. <laughs> A special night. A special <laughs> night indeed. Uh, so we went from the top to the bottom. We talked about all kinds of entertainment from Star Wars to Marvel to, uh, you know, some video games to close it out. I know we don't cover too many gaming topics, but our audience doesn't seem to want it. So that is why. But we'll be back next week at a later time for our Avengers Endgame live show. We'll be reviewing the movie. As I said, to reiterate our point of um, spoilers, we are not admitting any new members into our Facebook group until after the movie comes out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a pinned post at the top of the page, and that is where all the Endgame discussions will go. So if you're a member of the chat, or a member of the group, excuse me, just keep it in there, and we won't have any problems. And, you know, to be honest, we actually don't have any problems in the group as it is. So it's No, not, not usually. No. So, uh, yeah, just keep that in there and, uh, you know, have some fun. We're going to be talking about the movie because my philosophy is it's out. It's When it's out, it's out. So there you go. So uh, is there anything else you guys want to say? Nick, plug your shit. <clears throat> oh, yes, yes. I run my own channel uh, called Real Independent Productions. Real with two E's because it's a film pun. Uh, if you're tired of uh, Hollywood uh, fucking you in the ass all the time and you want to support some real artists and people who put their blood, sweat, and tears, tears into actual movies, uh, head over there and you know listen to our stuff. Talk about independent horror all the time and sometimes regular horror as well. We have discussions. We have uh, commentaries. We have all kinds of stuff, and we're always doing new things. So go over to that uh, channel. Give me a like. Give me a share. Give me a watch. Give me your money. Give me your firstborn. You know, whatever. It's fine. Give him your soul. Eh, those aren't worth no, those, those aren't worth as much, you know. They've didn't, yeah. didn't that, Bart Simpson trade his for five dollars to Miller? Yeah, that's yep. and that's kinda of, kinda of why the market's gone gone to shit over the last you know couple decades. So yeah, they've been undervalued substantially. Yeah, man. It's, you'd, you'd think it'd be worth more, but no, they're not. I guess not. Oh well, uh I guess that's it for this show. Also, oh, also I've got oh, something oh, to plug. Also the uh, channel dad uh, channel dad Brian Lake's channel as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Check get on there and get, give him a like too. What is what? Give us an update, a live update. What is he at in terms of subscribers? Let me see here. While he's doing that, I'm I'm going to plug the fact that me and Jesse Milestone are going to be getting together to bring you a football show. So if you're interested in football, because she is and I am, and I know some of the segment of our listening audience is interested, or if you just like us or you don't like us, you want to talk shit to us, we will next week launch our first episode of our show talking about football. Brian Lape is at 1,024 subscribers. Oh, he yeah. Did it. Yay, Lape did it. That's success of the show. All right, guys. Well, we'll be back next week with more. Sorry we didn't get a good morning pop culture. Um, shit happens. Shit happens when you party naked, folks. Remember, be excellent to each other. Oh, uh, um, oh wait. Alpha <laughs> says, don't forget the Buck Short Indiegogo. Yes, yes, yes. He's only got like five days left. Um... I guess I'll post that as well all, all, all over our social media. Uh, but yeah, they have five days left for a Richard Tanner of um, Frank and Thug, director of Frank and Thug and owner of A Buck Short Productions to uh, get the uh, A Buck Short Shorts DVD that's coming out soon. So look into that. Go to throw him some money. If you, if you if you don't want the DVD, just throw him some, you know, some money as well, some pennies, some whatever you got. Uh, he needs Anything it. He needs the help, you know, so. You know, I was actually thinking about, uh, you know how we got all those extra high council posters signed? Yeah. I think about doing a $1 raffle to get rid of them. You think that'd be a good idea? Yeah. I think it'd be a great idea. All right. Except folks. for save one for me because somebody ganked mine. I'm going to save a couple. I owe Logan Michael one. So, uh, all right. Yeah. Because he sent me some stuff in the mail. So that was our trade off. All right, folks. Uh, I'll be back Monday with another video. And tomorrow we'll have Tales from the P.O. Box. Thank you. Mm -hmm.